Philadelphia, a Beasley Media Group station. Broadcasting live from the Comcast Business Studios. Powering possibilities. 97.5 The Fanatic and 97.5thefanatic.com. One, two, three, four. Bob Cooney. 97.5 The Fanatic and 97.5thefanatic.com. Good Thursday morning, everybody in the Delaware Valley and beyond. Welcome to Middays with Bob Cooney. Some people call this the best sports day of the year. We'll talk about all of that. But I hope you're having a great day. A little chilly out there today. Uh, I, th I saw somebody say last night, I think, on the news, might be the coldest day of this year so far. So bundle up before you go out. I uh, hope you have something great planned today. I already had a friend text me asking me a question about today, which I am going to pose to you the listeners, to see what you think it is. Now, I had a phone call on my way in just to give you a little insight into my private life here, which um, I love to do because I'm an open book, right? Uh, my son, Kyle, texted me, sick, 70 degrees, sunny, 8.50 tea time, took off today and tomorrow, then back to my house with my buddies to watch the games. Ooh. So I had to call Kyle. I had to put the headset on and call Kyle. And, you know, what's, what's, what's today all about? So he laid it out. So golfing today, is that the ultimate day? Kind of seems like it to me if you're a golfer, if you're a sports fan. So he's, he's young in his professional life. So he took today and tomorrow off because he doesn't take vacations. So it's just days here and there. So he's got tea time early in the morning. Then... Back to his apartment to watch games with his boys, pizzas, and beers all day long. That's not bad. Not bad at all. So, let's get into what we're going to do today. A lot on the board here. A little recap of what happened yesterday and what to look forward to today. Sixers last night, blah, not good. 115-102 loss. Closer than that even looked. Uh, Tyrese Maxey, only six points. It just didn't go well. They gave up 39 in the second quarter. I'm watching the game. Sixers get out to a good start in being that they had a lead there in the first quarter that was real tight, but neither team was playing well. And I was just sitting there saying, well, Phoenix is just coming back from an East Coast trip, a four-game East Coast trip. Usually that first game back is a little ugly when you get back home. Uh, Sixers were playing just as ugly. And then Phoenix just starts to do Phoenix things. And they pull away with the win. Grayson Allen gets them 33 points, nine three-pointers. Sixers fall. I got some even worse news or, or more bad news on top of that loss. Both Indiana and Miami win last night. So it drops the Sixers to the eighth seed in the Eastern Conference. Tied with Miami. Miami holds the tiebreaker. Not good. You're at the Lakers tomorrow, and then you got the Clippers, and then you finish it out with the Kings before... Uh, Monday, they finish out with the Kings, and they fly home right after that game, which is tough. So your Tuesday is ruined. And then, boom, here you are on Wednesday, and here come the Clippers, who are a very good team. So tough uh, tough sailing for the Sixers right now, and it, it's only going to get tougher. Eagles, no news on Hassan Reddick. But if I put these names out to you, P.J. Mustafer, Oren Burks, Tyler Hall, does it excite you? Nah, not really, but those are their last three signings. Actually, last night I was sitting waiting to go on Pat Egan's show last night. So I you know, was giving Pat a listen earlier on because I wanted to hear my, my friend on the airwaves. And the breaking news drop hits. I was like, oh, what's going on here? Well, Stats Matt Menarek decided to hit the breaking news for the signing of Tyler Hall. Uh, Pat teased him about it endlessly, and rightfully so, and they had a good laugh. But that's a cornerback that the Eagles picked up yesterday. Appears to be a special teamer. Nothing major. Undrafted cornerback. The the big talk, or the I shouldn't say the big talk. The talk is now, is Justin Simmons going to be coming over here? 30-year-old safety, a Vic Fangio, uh, familiarity kind of guy. Uh, maybe a little older isn't the answer for the future, but but that appears to be a really big talking point around the NFL, so maybe you see a Justin Simmons here. Flyers tonight at the Carolina Hurricanes. The question is, does Coots get on the ice? 
or is he another healthy scratch? That's the big story surrounding the Flyers. I said to you earlier today, I said to Ray earlier today, I asked him if he ever saw the movie Slapshot, and he did because there's a Dickie Dunn connection there, all of that stuff. Well, there's a scene in the movie where the team is being sold and it appears ownership doesn't really care about it. Their star player goes out on the ice and starts, like, ice dancing in the middle of the game, like, la, and then not, not caring about the game at all. I wonder if Sean Couturier could do something like that on the ice tonight to uh, John Tortorella and kind of be like, yeah, you're going to sit me? Well, then I'm not really playing. Don't think it's going to happen, but it'll be interesting. We talked yesterday about the um, stylist, stylistic part of of uh, uh, John Tortorella and does this work on a Sean Couturier? Does it work on certain players? Does it not work on certain players? So we'll see. I, I assume I was talking to Haley early. She assumes that he's going to play tonight. Won't be a scratch. Lesson given. Lesson learned. Maybe we'll find out about that. So they have a they have a tough three game stretch here. So it's at Carolina tonight. Who's really? Then they host Boston at one o'clock on Saturday. Then they host uh, Carolina here at six o'clock on Sunday. So really three really tough games coming up uh, for the Flyers with back to backs on Saturday and Sunday. Phillies news. We got good news yesterday when we were talking to Todd Zalecki. As he said, uh, I'm sitting here, I'm watching, and I see Bryce Harper throwing a baseball. I see him grabbing a bat, and he's going to hit. So that's what Todd Zalecki saw yesterday. Harper was not in any lineup last night, but Todd said he expects him maybe on Friday to get back into a game or to see some pitching, some live action. So that's good news for the Phillies. What's not such good news is the outing by Taiwan Walker yesterday. Two and, a ter- two and two-thirds innings, five hits, seven earned runs. Didn't get above 92 on the gun, mostly around 88 to 92. Not looking good for a, a power pitcher. So we'll see. We'll have to see how that plays out. Do, does it mean that Jordan Montgomery might be uh, more apt to be gone after by your Philadelphia Phillies? We shall see. Kyle Schwarber yesterday had such a Kyle Schwarber day to me. Leading off, 0 for 3. Two walks, two strikeouts, but he scored a run. So that's what you got out of your leadoff hitter. Good debate, and we'll get into it a little more today also. Uh, Andrew and John were getting into it about Johan Rojas. What do you do? Uh, John made a pretty good point. Why, why are you letting him learn the game up at the major league level just because he has a major league glove? You can make the side for it. You can make the side against it. We'll get back into that a little bit later today. Christopher Sanchez takes the mound today for the Phillies. So we'll keep an eye on the, on his on the fifth starter, see how he makes out. Of course it is NCAA Thursday. We love it. Ray and I are going to look at the 16 games throughout the day. There you go, buddy. We'll look at them. We'll give you our winners throughout the show. Uh, maybe you'll have some thoughts on, on what we're saying there. I love today. It's a great day. I talked about it earlier this week. It, it kind of lost some of its luster to me and in, in just the surrounding of it. Selection Sunday didn't seem the same. Not knowing the teams doesn't seem all the same, no, knowing the individual players. But now it's here, and I'm pumped. Can't wait. I can't wait to turn on that TV across from me at 12 o'clock today just to have it there so we can sneak a peek in. All right, let's get into this now. Ray, it is the 20th anniversary of the demolition of one veteran stadium and ray i think you have it, it, it's it was so sad it was a sunday around seven in the morning i remember getting up for it but when you listen to walter perez from channel six describe this you would think i don't know right it sounded like walter had some really good times in veteran stadium because listen to the way he he announced this We've just been told we are approximately 30 seconds away from the actual implosion. Here's a live shot from Chopper 6 as we take a look at the situation five, up high. Four, Here's the final three, countdown. Three, two, fire, fire. And there it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, at 7.01 on this Sunday morning, we can officially say Veteran Stadium is no more. Wow, Walter was really hurt by that, wasn't he, right? <laughs> Veteran Stadium? Is no more. Wow. I, it was almost like he was, like, announcing a, 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 a former president died or something. You know, he was I, – I would love to know what kind of memories Walter Perez has of the vet because whatever they were, they, they hit home, man. He was, he was hurting on that day 20 years ago. 
But that's one of the things we want to have throughout the day. We'll have some fun with it at 610-632-0975. Don't forget, that's the line that you can call, and it's also the line that you can text. And we had a lot of great texts yesterday. But if you want to call, share your memories of the vet. That would be great. I have mine. I, I shared it with Ray earlier today. I don't know if it's... Um, I have a ton of them. But one of the first ones that comes up that puts a smile on my face is me and my friend Rock went to the vet to see the very first start of Randall Cunningham at quarterback. I believe it was against the Rams. It was like a rainy day, a miserable day. We had his two little nephews with us at the time. We're like 8 and 10. And they had on, you know, long slickers to cover cover themselves completely so they wouldn't get wet. Well, stupid Rock and I decided that, wow, there's like deep pockets in those slickers. We could probably throw a whole bunch of beer on these kids' slickers and sneak them into the vet so that we didn't have to pay for beer once we got in there. These these poor two little kids, I mean, Ray, they, they were walking like, as stiff as could be so that none of the beer would fall out of their slickers so that they could just, you know, take care of us. Is there something wrong with the word raincoat? But they were, um, no, but the reason I say slickers, because back then that's, that's where, that's what they called them. I like never once. Yeah, it was, once it was a that. slicker. Yeah. You never heard slick. You weren't no. even born yet. <laughs> no, I wasn't quite yeah. clearly. I, I, you've. Reached a part of my brain that does not work on well, that Well, it's one. funny. I turned to you this morning when I saw that it was the, uh, or you said to me, you said, oh, today's 20 years of the vet. And I said, yeah, look, I already have it written down. And I said, what's your, and I had to stop because I was going to ask Ray what his favorite memory of the vet was, but uh, he doesn't have any because he was three years old. My favorite memory is the memories of everyone else when I've been told about the vet. My favorite memories are the stories of my dad telling me about the vet. And I'm sure 700 always comes into it, right? Yes. The 700 level seats. We had one buddy, a a guy that uh, transferred over in grammar school, became one of our really good friends, played ball with him in high school and all. His family, huge family, had uh, Eagle season tickets in the 700 level, so close that they they were tall guys. He had an uncle 6'9", 6'8", 6'6". They could reach up and bang like the top. Of the vet, of the vet, and that's how they would get things going. It was so loud, but yes, yeah, so many memories about the vet. A uh, big, big story today: Shohei Otani, a uh, little bit of a gambling problem to the tune of four and a half million. Is the interpreter taking the fall? That's what it. I don't want to say that's what it appears. That the story right now is that the four and a half million dollars lost to betting was by his interpreter. Shohei Otani, if you read the timeline of the stories, it's kind of a little sketchy. There was this announcement by this group and then an announcement here, and oh, no, I meant that, and then this and the other. We'll dive into that a little bit more because I think it's a really interesting story. John and Andrew were going back and forth on this. Is it going to be? Is it going to become this really big story? Is it going to be hush-hush? I'll tell you, $4.5 million and... You got to find out how he was betting. You have to make sure it wasn't Otani himself. Could it have been his wife? Could it have been Shohei Otani's wife that was doing the betting? And the, and the translator's taking the downfall for her, Ray. I don't know, but that's a story that we'll get into a little bit more. Uh, so many good things today. I, I want to ask you also, we, we want to hear your favorite vet uh, stories throughout the day. But do you consider today to be the greatest sports day of the year? So I had a buddy text me before we came on the show, and he said kind of the same thing about how do you look at today. You know, I'll read it verbatim. Uh, would you rank this as the most exciting day in sports, along with or better than the Sunday Masters and the Super Bowl? It's pretty interesting that he lumped those three like that is the guaranteed three. It's either first Thursday of, of the NCAA tournament, Sunday at the Masters, or the Super Bowl. What's yours? Like, what's your greatest day in sports? I told you how my son is spending his golfing in the morning, going home with his buddies in the afternoon, getting some pizza, getting some beers, and just hanging out and watching that all day. So let me know. Let me know what kind of great day you may have planned, or even if this is the greatest day in sports. 610-632-0975. Don't forget also... 
that you can text that number to. This is the 10 o'clock hour. It's brought to you by Window Nation. Take advantage of Window Nation's 50% off sale on all style windows. Plus, make no down payment with no payments and no interest for 12 full months. Call 866-90-NATION or visit windownation.com. So, Ray, your rankings. Where is today's stand as far as sports days in the Ray Dunn calendar of events? Is this the greatest sports day of the year? This is. This is most certainly the best sports day of the year. Uh, had I not been here specifically right now, I can assure you what I would be doing is maybe not the same thing that your son is up to today, but I would probably be right about now getting some breakfast going, getting ready to walk down to one of my buddy's places, uh, plopping down probably a nice case of cold ones next to me, and I would do absolutely nothing from noon until whenever the final game is done tonight. Now, are you more apt to wanting to watching the games with people, or are you uh, liking it better when you're sitting alone where you can concentrate more and really take it in? No, I'm, I'm watching with people. Okay. Because today is, today like this event, and this is why it does more for me than Master Sunday and does more than Super Bowl Sunday, the number of games, the amount of chaos, the number of things that are unexpected, and then getting to gauge the reaction of people in the room who went into this day at noon thinking they were intelligent, thinking that they knew exactly what was going to happen and realizing they're just morons is one of the best things about today. I am almost upset because I think I'm going to miss the first upset today. I think I will miss the first upset, and I want to see the look on my buddy's face when he realizes his future for the national championship was gone within the first three hours of this tour. I'll say I'm a little surprised at you. Really? I, I, I Surprised and with a tinge of disappointment. So you're not getting enjoyment just out of the day. You're looking for enjoyment out of other people's misery. That's not the case. Uh, that's exactly how you just described that's it. That's not the case. It's not necessarily the misery because it's an experience of going into, you know going into the tournament something insane is going to happen. You are guaranteed that. It's, and, and the insaneness has probably already happened in the conference tournaments, so maybe it'll carry over even more so in this right. tournament. You just know chaos is happening today. You just hope that what you have in your bracket, or for those of you who throw a dollar or two on something outside of the bracket, you just hope the chaos doesn't impact you. You're just hoping to dodge the chaos. Inevitably, you will be impacted by the chaos. That is, that I don't see it as me rooting for someone's misery. It's all of us rooting together to see who can dodge the ball of chaos. And today is the ultimate chaotic sports day, as well as tomorrow. Because there's so many games happening at once. You're screaming at one television. You're screaming at another television. You're screaming just at each other. It's an awesome experience to sit down and watch today's games with a group of people. So... Do you stream or do you just have normal cable or what do you have? Where I'm going today will be a combination of both. Oh, One okay. television with it and then probably a number of them streaming. Okay, so we switched over to YouTube TV a couple of months ago, okay? YouTube TV has a really cool thing where you can get four in one. Right, yes. No, we'll be so TV'd up. I, this is honest to God truth. So my wife heard about it in the summer about YouTube TV, save money, blah, blah, blah. She's all, she does everything at the house. I, I don't do diddly squat. I just don't, and I, I, I'm horrible for it, but she takes care of everything. So she changes it over to YouTube TV. So, you know, she's all excited about, oh, what, about, what do you think of this? And my first day there, I go and turn it on. It's a Saturday, and I turn it on, and I go, oh, my God. And she's like, what, what? And she comes running up. She's, you know, thinking something's wrong. I said, I can watch four games at once. <laughs> because it And she looks at me like, you're such an ass. Like, that's all you care. So my first thought was, I cannot wait till that Thursday and Friday. First thought oh, it's gonna be great of for YouTube you. TV. So there have been times where I've gotten other TVs from the house and lined them up. So I had one on top and one on the bottom. And then, you know, watch. I did it last year when the, uh, I guess it was the Phillies and the Sixers were in the playoffs at the same time. Sixers and somebody in the playoffs. Could, couldn't have been Flyers. Maybe it was important Phillies. Whatever it was, I went downstairs in the in the house that we got a couple years ago and had a big TV, and then underneath of it I put the smaller TV. And so it worked out perfectly for me. 
I don't need that anymore with my YouTube TV. That's so awesome. We, we, should, we should get them as, as a sponsor after yeah, all. After this. Well, that's the funny thing. We had YouTube TV at my college apartment. So if they had had that feature a couple of years ago, we would have been living. Because I told you, I've said this a couple of times yeah. already this week. And I saw, I think it was uh, Let's Go the Phones uh, uh, tweeted out the idea of you should be able to rent your college apartment for yes. a day. And I, I was like, yes. If I could go back and I texted my college roommate that tweeted me, that I was like, we could go back and set up the four TVs in the backyard one more time and enjoy March Madness like we did, I would be all in for it. Yeah. And I, like today will be something where we try again to recreate a little bit of that. But, you know, one guy's working remote, another guy, you know, can't come into the city. We're going to make our best of it today. But I can't wait. Yeah, the last time that I could take off, like legitimately take a day off, to watch March Madness, I was probably in my young 20s. Um, it was before I was married, and I remember there was this bar in Cherry Hill that we went to, and they had TVs everywhere, and we were there at like 12 o'clock and just hung. And then it was to another bar later that afternoon, and then probably a buddy's house sitting in his basement watching till the end of the day. It was... It, uh, Maybe that's why the memory isn't as good to me because I can't do that anymore. I can't just take a day off. I can't go out. You know, I don't want to really go out drinking from 12 in the afternoon to 12 at night. Speak for yourself. I will not speak for you. Yes. So so we got a lot on the board today. 610-632-0975. Give us a call. You know I love to talk to you guys. But if you can, if you're sitting at your desk, boss is behind you, if you want to, uh, to uh, text us, you can do it at that number also. What is your favorite memory of Veterans Stadium. It's 20 years ago today that it was demolished. I'm sure there's a ton of you out there that have great memories of it. Let us know what they are. When we get back, there's somebody that I don't know that I've ever seen in my lifetime market themselves better than this person. And it has to do with this time of year. I'll talk to you about it when we get back here. It's Middays, Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic. Update. 76ers struggle against the Suns. I'm Ray Dunn. This update is brought to you by Audible. When it comes to audiobooks, Audible has the best...
Hey, here at the Fanatic, wherever you are, NCAA tournament starting. Oh, I gotta love it. You just have to love it. It is the best day of the year in sports, I think. I really do. That just the beginning of all this madness that's going to happen that for the next, what is it, four weekends, I guess? Because you go Sweet 16, Elite 8, Final Four, yeah, whatever. And three. Three. Three and weekends. Yeah, so it, it's just, it is so much fun, and I love to hear people tell us what they're going to do today. I told you my son's got a pretty good day plan with the golf, but, but I might be calling him out on something here. So I'm looking, and today when you call in at 610-632-0975, we'll give you one of the 16 games. We are going to build a bracket together. You guys, me, Ray, we're going to build a bracket together. So when you call in on your thoughts on whatever you're thinking, uh, I'll throw a game to you, and, and I'll have you pick the winner for that one. But as I'm looking at today's games, Ray, first game today, Michigan State, Mississippi State, right? I look, I'm like, oh, where's that game? It's right down the street from his apartment. So he's going golfing and then watching games from his house, which is great. Would it be greater to go to some of these first games at the Charlotte Arena, which is right near his house? Did he make a mistake, Ray? How much is the ticket, though? Uh, money's no object to him. Okay. Yeah. On top of that, he's only seen... I don't think... Do you think tickets would be that expensive to a first-round game in the well, how many? Of... I mean, you're getting tickets to how many games? They yeah, could really I guess you're getting to... a few games today, getcha. right? Yeah, yeah, I think they could raise that price up on you. I'm, I'm not so sure it's that, that cheap of a ticket. Okay. Plus, you're missing all the rest of the games. Good point. That's so, why I asked the question hey, to listen, you. Listen, I'm just telling you the way I feel about it. Very good. And now, then, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I just, uh, I just want, while we're talking basketball here, I, I'm kind of shocked that uh, you have not yet, you know, celebrated the uh, victory that you had last night. Because while well, the Sixers might have lost, I was tuned in to uh, Pat Egan on Philly Sports Tonight and Sixers All Access, where you joined him. I did. I joined him at 9-10. And uh, I heard you absolutely nailed the way last game went, or last night's game went. And I'm shocked that you have not yet uh, wanted to uh, take yeah. a victory lap on that one. I don't remember what I said. Okay. Right. Well, I've got what you said last <laughs> night. So if you remember, Grace Allen scored 32 points, nine threes. Uh, you, uh, you were on with Pat Egan, and you pretty much nailed the way last night's game went. You know, when you look at it, like I mentioned B.R., I mentioned Duran, I mentioned Booker. Well, Grayson Allen for them has been scoring really well like the last six or seven games. Grayson Allen, if he was on the Sixers right now, would probably be like your second scorer on a team, like a guy that you'd really be looking for points from. He's given them points, and they have the other three guys that I mentioned before him. So I, I do. I just think tonight, I've seen this game so many times before, I just think tonight, Phoenix goes out and scores a lot of points, and I just don't see how the Sixers can keep up with them. Interesting. Wow. How do you like that? Grayson Allen goes for 33 last night, nine three-pointers. Sixers go down 115-102. Phoenix didn't score the way I thought they were going to, but uh, they broke it open with 39 in the second quarter last night. So uh, bad loss for the Sixers. One that you kind of remember. But a couple pretty cool things here. Josh Sass on our YouTube page. Love our YouTube people. You know how much I love you. Love the bond that we have formed there. <laughs> He's got a great story about the vet. He says he was about seven or eight years old, and they were going to see the monster trucks. His mom hit a curb in the van, busted up the wheel, busted up the tire, everything like that. They never made it in. He said that's his best memory of the vet. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of good memories. Uh my friend Jake Dumphy has been texting in. Yes, he is the cousin of one friend. Uh, texted in saying about how he could sneak in if you were skinny enough to go through two poles. I know exactly where he's talking about. Or one of the ticket take takers back then that wasn't a big thing. If you had a ticket from the night before or something, you just kind of shyly handed it to him and he acted like he ripped it up and gave it back to you and you, you walk in. There's a million different ways that you could. Uh, there was a ramp that led into the like um, right field bullpen that you could almost ride your bike down. <laughs> it was that wide open uh, to go down in there. So a lot of vet memories that, that everybody has. But I teased, before we get to the phone line here, I teased to you, and I'll mention it real quick, and maybe you have some thoughts on other people that have branded, them, branded themselves so well. But if you think about it, this time of the year, Ray, I have a feeling you know who I'm talking about. Is there anybody that has branded themselves better than Joe Lenardi? Nationally known bracketologist. 
Now, I was lucky enough. I know Joe. Uh, great guy. Just a really, really good guy. I was around when it was just starting out. Like, you heard this. What the hell's bracketology? When, it, when he was first branding it and himself, we were all around it, and we laughed. Oh, look at that. Joe Lenardi was on ESPN last night. Like, he got interviewed by ESPN. Or Joe Lenardi was in the Los Angeles paper talking about And then it was like, Joe Lenardi is hunted down by everyone when it comes March Madness time. And it is just unbelievable that if you think about he invented it, he ran with it, he is superb at it, and now he is the bracketologist. Like, there's... I remember when, when Barack Obama was... Remember when he was president, he used to fill out his, his thing with uh, Andy Katz, he would fill out his bracket. You know, I remember him just saying, yeah, well, you know, Joe Lenardi was saying that this team... I'm like, oh, my God, he's just a, a, a roll off the tongue of the president of the United States. So I just thought that was neat. I, if you have any ideas of, yeah, look who else branded themselves in such a good way, another little topic that, that we can go with today. But a lot of Sixers, Flyers, Eagles, Phillies talk on the board, whatever you want. Jeff and Camden wants to start us off. Jeff, you're on 97.5 The Fanatic. What's up, Jeff? Yeah, how you doing, man? Good. What's going on? So, uh, you know, I, I just wonder what, what Howie, uh, you know, he's getting a lot of praise and, and rightfully so for fixing this defense. But a lot of what last transpired last season was his fault for going into that season like that. And I'm not a numbers guy. That's not my job to know what the Eagles' salaries are and what they are to work with. But am I to believe that he couldn't have done what he did this year, last year, and not subjected, subjected us to that mayhem that we uh, encountered last season? So here's my here's the other side of it, Jeff. That defense two years ago was phenomenal. 70 sacks, a uh, big part of playing them, getting into the Super Bowl. You had career years from a bunch of guys. I wouldn't have had the guts to change it up. I wouldn't have had the guts to say, yeah, but Bradbury and Slay, you're getting older, boom, you're out, because they had pretty much career years that year. I wouldn't have changed a whole lot up from that defense. So I didn't blame him last year. I don't know that I can go back and say he was wrong. Last season was historically the worst Eagles defense in Eagles franchise history. It, it was, no to, question. They to a stretch where they averaged a touchdown per drive, and that gets put on the offense. The offense has to carry and shoulder the load for that. So that's just where I'm at with so, that. So, but, all right, real quick, what, but... When they got done losing the Super Bowl, was one of your main points you got to get this defense better? Because I'll be honest, it wasn't mine. But they did not bring key parts back, and they did not retool is what I'm saying. Okay. So, you know, that's just where I'm at with it. Now, I just hope this is a clean slate moving on. I'm hella excited for the season coming on, and I'm sorry to say hella. All right, but, that's um, okay. Real great for this offseason so far for Howie Roseman. Uh. Uh, B-plus right now. Okay. Cool. B-plus. Right. B-plus is a good grade. Thanks so much, Jeff. Appreciate it. Oh, I actually hit, hit hold. Can you? Uh, uh, B-plus is a good grade. I wrote down because I had one of my friends also texted me and said, uh, Brian, who has my old house, he bought my old house, good friend of mine, he asked me, what's your grade for Howie Roseman so far? And I'm sitting here, and I was half writing down, and I, like, you ever go to write something, and you just you write something without thinking that you're writing it? it I kind of wrote down a grade without really thinking it out, and mine was a B-. minus. Really? Now, you're surprised. That should be higher. And then I started to do the, you know, how you have the minus, and I started to get the line and maybe started to put it down to say, should I change it to plus? Because CJGJ is back. You did get yourself a starting linebacker in Devin White. Uh, you, you got yourself an edge rusher with Huff. I think why the minus came before I put the slash through it to make it a plus was because this Hassan Reddick thing, I think, is egregious. I just do. I, I can't believe that it's come to, nah, best player on the defense. We gave him a good deal at 345. He wants a little bit more money at 29. Nah. I, I'll tell you what. Josh Sweat and Huff are not as good players as they could be if Hassan Reddick isn't there. I thoroughly believe that. I think it's it's the move or lack thereof move if he doesn't extend him, that takes that, that keeps that B minus just that instead of putting the line down and making it a plus. 
I, I I don't agree with this Hassan Reddick handling at all. And I heard people say, well, what are you going to do? You're going to you're going to make him play on a one year contract, and he's a lame duck, a lame duck. I, I, you're under con- he's under contract. Like I, I don't I'm not being cold to the players, Hassan Reddick, anything like that. But if Howie doesn't agree to giving him an extension and giving him more money, and he's not getting back what he wants. What else What else is he supposed to do except, like, play the game of football? And maybe he does play so well that Howie says to him, I don't know, three weeks into the season, Hassan, sorry about that, buddy. Let, let, let's get in touch with your agent and we'll start talking. But I, I don't know. I'm in disagreement when people say, ah, you can't just have him go out and play and he's disappointed and not happy. I, I'm, I'm paying you $15 million a year. I, I think you should work. Am I wrong on that, Ray? Am you, I just totally you out? You really think he's playing on the last year of his deal? Okay. He doesn't have another deal it, uh, coming up. If he doesn't play, you, you don't think he's costing himself money? You don't think that this is going to be re- this can be remedied before the season? I would think so. One way or another. I would think so. He's either an extension or he's being traded. The, the, the last year of the contract thing, if he wants a new contract, wants more money, this is being remedied before the season. Okay. But if, if the scenario lays out like I said that Howie Roseman doesn't want to pay him more right now, and he's not getting equivalent of what he thinks he should get right now, he's under contract. Yeah, a lot of guys are under contract for the last year of their contract. Sure. Not a lot of them end up under that, that one-year umbrella when they perform the way that Reddick has. There's a lot of guys that become free agents. They are. Yeah, so yeah. they have to play a last year they of a contract. They have to play last year of their contract. So, when you know, I don't played, know. When Reddick's outplayed his contract in this way his first two seasons, a guy who has outplayed his contract that way going into the final year of his contract is going to do exactly what Reddick's doing right now. But, I, he's, I but he's going to go out and play. I don't, think, I don't think this situation ends with him playing on the last year of his deal. Okay. I, and you're look, the percentages are far in your favor. I I just brought up the scenario that when people say, "Oh no, he you can't have that." Well, you could. It probably won't, but you could. And I don't I don't fault Howie Roseman if they get what he wants and he doesn't want to pay. Now that's a whole other argument that he should pay him. But if he doesn't want to, he can fall back on the Sorry, dude, I'm paying you 15 a year. You got to come to work. You're getting 15 million dollars this year. You can become a free agent, or maybe we like you so much in the middle of the season. We'll talk about it, but, I mean, it could. So much to talk about with so many things going on in the city. That's why I love it here. 610-632-0975. You can call in and talk, or you can text us. We're here until 2 o'clock midday show, Bob Cooney.
station for now more with Bob Cooney 97.5 the fanatic and 97.5 the fanatic.com 11 o'clock today just a couple minutes away the great Ed Barkowitz will be joining us he is absolutely phenomenal uh, probably the premier betting person in this city and I'm not just talking like picking a team and betting that way no it's the behind the scenes of betting the betting world uh great great stories that Eddie has Eddie and I have known each other we grew up together at the Daily News I think Eddie came in a couple of months after me Ray uh so we spent a lot of time there uh, a lot of good times with Eddie but his his betting perspective is just absolutely phenomenal so Eddie will be joining us at 11 o'clock one o'clock Bill Calarulo from the station, weekend guy, who uh, specializes in Eagles, let's say. Uh, he's going to join us at 1 o'clock to talk all things Eagles. You know what else we have to do today, Ray? We have to wish little Cooper Salchunas a happy birthday. Yep, little Cooper's birthday today. I asked um, I asked Andrew if he was going out or doing anything for the tournaments, and he said, no, nah, we have to do a little uh, happy birthday dinner with the little guy tonight. So, happy birthday, Cooper, on the day that the vet was imploded 20 years ago. 20 years ago, Ray. Yes. A long, long Two things time. both happened today. Yes. Chad in Allentown has a vet memory. Chad, how you doing? You're on 97.5 The Fanatic. I'm doing great. How are you guys? Doing well, thanks. So, yeah, I, I've got two, actually. All so, right. And, you know, my father and I had, had tickets for a long time. Uh, in 1980... I was like seven years old, maybe eight at, at this point. And uh, I almost got hit by a car near the player's parking lot. Oh, jeez. And uh, my dad wasn't paying attention. I walked out of the middle of the street. Steve Carlton almost hit me by a car. <laughs> Gets out of the car, the nicest guy ever. Uh, he was like, you know, I'm sorry. I was late. I, I was driving like a maniac. My dad lit me up when we got home. Uh, he died. So anyway, he's like, yeah, you could have ruined his career. Uh, yeah. The best story I have from the back, though, is when I was uh, in college, came back home. Me and my buddy go to a game. We're waiting outside where the players come out and people getting autographs and whatever. And my buddy, Darren Dalton, comes out and my with his wife. And my buddy's like, hey, can I get your autograph? And, and Dutch was like, sure. He's like, not you, her. <laughs> and... And Crocker was right behind him. It laughed so hard I thought he was going to throw up. That's it pretty good. Ab- it was absolutely hilarious. If I'm not mis- it might have been the girl that was uh, on the sign in Clearwater, the Hooters girl. Uh, she was some, some some kind of model. Okay. Uh, yeah, believe it yeah. or not. Yeah, Chad, thanks so much for the vet memory. I love it. I remember going to a Phillies playoff game. My dad took me, and they lost. And it was a real, real disappointing loss. So we're getting ready to leave, and my dad didn't drive, so, of course, we had to do a subway to a cab to a a high-speed line to another cab, you know, just crazy. But we go to the bathroom before we leave, and I'm I'm a young kid. I'm, like, not even 10 or something like that. And there's this drunk guy in the stall next to me, and my dad's standing next to me. So, you know, I'm kind of embarrassed to be in the bathroom with my dad in the first place. And now we got this drunk guy next to me and goes, those bleeping Phillies, I swear there's more blanks than there is peeing in here in their clubhouse. And I was like, oh, my God, this guy just cursed. And my dad's, and he used the D word, and my dad's standing there. And I remember, like, getting flush, like, so red and finishing up, and I couldn't even look at my dad. So I think the whole ride home, like, I never even looked at my dad. I was just so embarrassed. But another great vet memory. You, you never, see, you never got to, 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 be in a vet bathroom, Ray. Was, no, no. I think they were troughs. They were. I don't think it was a urine. I think no. it was a long trough. It, I, it was because we went to an arena this year, and uh, our strength and conditioning coach uh, said he went and used the bathroom. He said he was immediately taken back to the vet because one of the arenas that we played in had the troughs. He was like, that. I felt like I was walking into Veterans Stadium. Yeah. Um, it's funny, though. Chad saying that his dad lit him up when they got home for nearly ruining Steve Carlton's career. 
Randy, not the fact that he right. nearly got hit by a car. He didn't go to save him. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't you nearly got hit by a car and could have been seriously injured. It was you nearly ruined Steve Carlton's career. Pay attention, kid. That's yeah. lefty. That's left. Yeah. Imagine if it was like Gene Garber, then maybe he would have felt better about his kid. Edith has a Hassan Reddick take here. Edith, you're on 97.5 The Fanatic. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Ray. How are you guys? Good. How you doing today? Good, Bob. Welcome to the show, bro. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm with you all the way because he has got to pay that boy. He deserves that money. Come on. He deserves that money. How he can do anything. He's a wizard. Make it work out because we need him on that edge. We need him. I agree with him. you. And that's, yeah, that's, that's the crazy. marriage that I can't believe hasn't happened. It's money, and it's a good player. Howie, that's what he's best at, right, Edith? Well, it's, uh, exactly. And is he mad at him because he's asking for more money, and it's personal now? Because there's no way he can't make it happen. There's no way. And he should say him. I think her son did what he was supposed to do. He did what he was supposed to do for the Eagles. Agree with you. you. Know, he, he held his job down, so I don't understand why he can't get his money. It doesn't make any sense to me. So either it's something personal with him, between him and his, him and um, Hassan, because I don't get it. I don't well, get it. Yeah, we'll see how it plays out, Edith. Thank, thanks so much for the call. Love me some Edith. Have you ever met Edith? I have not met oh, Edith. Great, great, great person. Do we have uh, on the text line somebody's disagreeing yes. with something that we had to say, Ray? Quite quite disappointed with the Hassan Reddick conversation. Oh, no. What's wrong? Nobody should be upset that the Eagles are moving on from Hassan Reddick until we know how much he wants. If he wants anything close to $25 million a year, Miles Garrett money, he's objectively not worth that. If you want something like $20 million a year and the Eagles weren't willing to pay him that, then I think it's a mistake. But it's hard for me to get on Howie about the situation when I don't have all the details yet. I don't, we weren't on Howie, were we? I've been on Howie. So. Okay. All right. Well, hey. maybe we can get it done. All right. When we get back, Eddie Barkowitz is going to join us to probably help you a little bit with some betting going on. Uh, the premier bet person in this city. Eddie Barkowitz joins us at 11 o'clock. And then you, 610-632-0975. This is the Midday Show. Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic. Fanatic Sports Update. A rough start out west. I'm Ray Dunn. This update is brought to you by Jackson Hewitt. It matters who does your taxes. Why are people...
o'clock hour. It's brought to you by Golden Nugget Jewelers. It's where Philly gets engaged. On the line with us now, one of my favorite people of all time, Ray. Like, if you talk about somebody having your back, somebody you want to go to war with, somebody that, you know, you call a lifelong friend, Eddie Barkowitz is the man. Eddie, what's going on, buddy? You're on the biz- Comcast Business Hotline. How are you today? You know what, Bobby? Uh, and I, I feel the same about you. If if I had a four and a half million dollar gambling debt, you would be my first call. <laughs> I, I'm going out on a prediction on this, Eddie. It's the wife. <laughs> <laughs> she looked oh. too happy in the stands the other day when he got a single. I think she had a bet on it. Oh, uh, what right. a what a mess that could turn out to be. Uh, right? I mean, this could be really bad. Your sport, your betting sports world may have turned his life upside down, right? You, you know, it, it's and and the thing that's complicating things more than the other scandals, more than Calvin Ridley or or anything else for Shohei, is that it's illegal in in California. And reportedly, the LA Times really reported this extremely well. Uh, said that the the guy that he was betting with was an illegal bookie. Um, that's an automatic one year suspension, regardless of sport. My understanding in baseball. Now, if it's baseball related. Um, uh, and now it hasn't been proven that Otani's right. been betting on on baseball or, or been betting it at all, but it's certainly got some ugly tentacles to it um, that could uh, you know that that could really <laughs> and, and it will affect the, the, the sports betting world from a from a practical standpoint because the Dodgers uh, nationwide are you know they're they're a heavy favorite to win because they added Otani win totals home World Series numbers all these other things people have tickets out there yeah and. They, you know how how this plays out, and that's just from a sports betting standpoint. Obviously, there's a lot more serious things that, that uh, serious ways this could play out for. Them. All right, forget the, forget the uh, like the the reporting that uh, you and I are sitting at a bar. What do you think really happened here? Uh, again, this is this is something you know. Again, we're it's at a just bar us. Nobody's here. listening, Eddie. It's all right. Yeah. We're in a beer. You haven't kiddied up yet. I know that. Um, <laughs> I got uh, long pockets and short arms. Mike Kern taught me that. <laughs> yeah, you got fish hooks in your pocket. That's my right. Um, I, I hope I hope that it was a case of the interpreter just being a horrible gambler and Shohei just trying to make it right for the guy. Um, that's your you know, hope. It, I, that's my hope. And I, I, I can't speculate as to what happened. But, you know, for the people who may be jumping up and down about, you know, how – sports the explosion of sports betting uh you know contributed and there is there is some of that because there is more exposure but this would never happen at a regulated sports book because you can't bet a nickel without putting that nickel up there's no credit betting so as long as you have these sort of these dark areas of of, of california and texas two of the most populous states in the country do not have legalized legalized sports betting People are going to bet on sports, and they always have. Yeah, they're just going to find a different outlet when it's regulated. There's there there are there are checks and balances and and, and regulations, and and we saw it with Temple UAB. There are things involved that when when betting uh, uh, becomes skewed, or 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 frankly, when betters are betting more than they should, uh, it's not perfect. They're predatory uh, sports folks out there. I won't I won't say that they're not. But this is an unregulated uh, sports book, which has uh, this uh, Otani thing tangled up in. Well, you mentioned it. You mentioned the Temple UAB thing that went on a couple of weeks ago. What what kind of inside info do you have on that? Like, how, what what kind of went down there? Maybe that people misperceived, or or maybe correctly perceived. Sure. The, the the fact that U.S. integrity got involved, I think, set off five alarm fires that weren't necessarily true. Now. I'm not saying that, that there wasn't some some complicity on, on anybody's part, but here's an example, Bob. Uh, U.S. Integrity, just a, a quick background, is a third-party uh, uh, company. They're contracted by leagues all over the country and, frankly, all over the world uh, to monitor uh, sort of abnormalities in sports betting. So basically when, when a Temple first-half line is getting an inordinate amount of action, U.S. integrity gets alerted. Um, that's not to say that there is, you know, there's fixing or any sort of point shaving uh, going on. That that doesn't have to be the case. And the example of that 
is in November, uh, UNLV was playing a, uh, uh, playing a college football game against New Mexico. The point spread, the first half line went from uh, uh, something like nine and a half to, yeah, here it is, I have it in my notes, nine and a half to 16 and a half in a flash. So like it, went, wow. it, it moved too quickly. They got way too much money on it. And the sports book then alerted U.S. integrity. Well, sure enough, uh, UNLV scores a touchdown on its first play, uh, then is up 35-7 at half, and all the people who were on UNLV first half cleaned up. And so there was an investigation. U.S. integrity, took, uh, uh, you know, d- 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 sifted through everything they could and said that there was no wrongdoing on the part of New Mexico. It was just, you know, they couldn't find anything. It's basically what it was. Okay. Now, that could be that it was just a bad line. You know, it, you know, I, I appreciate the, the idea that I'm, you know, a sports betting expert or, you know, the, the, the kind words that you shower, but, but I'm not, dude. I, I, I'm well, not nobody's an expert when it comes to betting, really, if we're being well, honest. Well, no, but there, there are levels of professional sports bettors, um, guys who grind away at 16 hours a day. I'm not that guy. I'm still smarting over Montana State Grambling last night. But <laughs> I, I do have a sense of, you know, like you said, sort of the inside of, of sports betting. And what happens is, in, in the case of UNLV New Mexico, the, the speculation is that it was just a bunch of sharp sports bettors who created, the, who you know, who signed up for accounts. Um, and now that's a different problem. Right, but right. Accounts and then laid heavily on uh, UNLV. And so there, it, just because U.S. integrity is involved does not mean that there was anything nefarious going on in part of the schools i mean it could be they they have certainly found stuff you could see that what happened at the alabama baseball scandal where they you know they were involved yep. in sort of uncovering that even though the alabama baseball coach was a moron and handled that totally yeah you know, not well whatever but so there's there's always layers I, I guess in the years that i've been doing this nothing is ever as it seems on its surface in this in this goofy sports betting world and hopefully that's the case with Otani. Maybe there's something there that we don't know, and hopefully nobody at Temple uh, was compromised because you know they the, the implications of that could be could be really unfortunate. All right, you got some underdogs that you might like this year that you said you wanted to talk about. Let's hit on that, and then we have the bet bash that we got to get into also. Yeah, real quick, uh, uh, John Burroughs from uh, uh, the coach at Akron uh, when he was at Ohio. Uh, as a double-digit seed of 14, he beat Georgetown straight up, 13 and a half dog. Uh, he, he was at uh, at Akron again, at double-digit dog, uh, won again, beat Michigan. So he's 4-0 in the first round. Uh, Akron is uh, they got a they, they got Creighton this week. Uh, I'm sorry, Creighton uh, in the first round. They're getting 13 and a half points. Uh, his teams play well in the first round. 13 and a half seems heavy to me. So Akron is is something I'm looking at. Um, another one is Samford. Um, uh, and I wish their I wish their nickname was like the, the Samford Lamonts or something. Something to do with Fred Samford because <laughs> the Samford Lamonts. Without... There's like half the people that even get that that are listening right now, Eddie. I know. I, I don't <laughs> and I loved it though. Google Samford and Son. It's a hilarious. Show. Nah, 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 nah. Um, but anyway, Samford. Um, they have a Kansas team that is going to be without its best player. Um, they have a um, – I hadn't seen the line lately, but they play lightning fast. Um, and they're just a very difficult team to prepare against. So uh, Sanford and, and, and Akron are two of the teams. And one other, if I might throw it out there. Sure. Again, I'm not a professional. I'm just an informed dude. Uh, over in JMU, uh, James Madison, Wisconsin is 145 and a half. James Madison. What a year they've had, James Madison. Yeah, they're averaging 84 a game, and Wisconsin turned it on a little bit in the uh, in the Big Ten tournament. They they hit 80 a couple, so 145 and a half might be a might be a play there. Uh, but that's 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 just what I've looked at so far. But again, I'm I'm an informed guy. I'm not a professional guy. Like, like don't worry, we're not we're, we're not we're not labeling you as such. That's a, yeah. Anybody that's friends with me, everybody knows that they're not an expert in anything. So. All right, tell us about this bet bash. August 6th through the 9th at Circa Resort in downtown Vegas? Yeah, well, what it is, it's, it's, a, it's a convention of sports bettors. So uh, people who are new to this, uh, and, and Pennsylvania and New Jersey are, are, are well ahead of, of, of some of the other states, but if you're new to the sports betting game, 
uh, and want to meet professional sports bettors and, frankly, people on the other side of the window. There are sports book operators who come out there and and learn about it. And, obviously, Bobby, this is the fifth year that, that it's uh, – that it's been going on and, it, and if it sounds crazy it is it's not there are <laughs> there there are there are more characters in that movie than than uh, at that convention than a four-hour movie but it's fun and it's interesting and it's at the circuit which you know if you know vegas or if you haven't if you've never been to the circus sports book uh is is fantastic and their pool their swimming pool is just outrageous is that the place where so, we went uh, I don't think we went there. No, you would remember it. I don't think we were there. We went then. to a place where they had a huge pool. Remember, we got like a a table and and uh, we were laying outside. And uh, yeah, you've been to Vegas so many times, you don't remember. But yeah, we went with your sister and her boyfriend and stuff, and we were at a place. Oh, uh, probably then. I, I yeah, I don't know that. That was, that was, that was, that was many that was, brain cells ago. I was just gonna say, yeah, that was that was three pancreases ago. Um. <laughs> So yeah, it's a uh, it's a fun time. Uh, it's educational. There's uh, there's uh, the open bars and all this other stuff that comes with the ticket. It's and I'm doing one of the seminars because uh, uh, I'm teaching a class. Yeah, you're a teacher. Yeah, I know, right? Weep, weep for the youth of America, for God's sake. <laughs> um, yeah, but I'm teaching a class at Rowan University. Neil Hartman uh, got me involved in, it, and Emil Steiner is uh, is um, is my sort of supervisor, mentor, basically. But teaching uh, a sports betting and media class uh, to prospective journalism students. Kids are going to be sports writers or broadcasters and giving them the fundamentals, the backgrounds of sports betting, the history of it, you know, why past the, you know, the over the Supreme court thing in 2018 uh, was so important. The, the scandals, everything from, you know, uh, the black Sox. Uh, so I taught the class in the fall and I, I will say I, 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 I was a little disheartened when one of the kids said, wait, who's Pete Rose? Yeah. So, that's well, where that's we are in I'm life, here. Ed. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm here. Yeah, so, nothing we can do but, about that. But when these kids go to write about Shohei Itani and the, the, the name Pete Rose gets brought up, they will have a foundation. They'll have an understanding that. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll need, they need to know this kind of stuff. You right. know? Uh, if you want to be a sports writer, sports broadcaster, uh, you know, in your field, you know, we, this is the kind of stuff they don't know unless we teach them. That's right. And nobody better to teach it than you, Eddie Barkowitz. Yeah. And here's, right. not, here's what not to do. Right? Yeah. You are the man. I appreciate you taking a couple of minutes out of your day today to join us and educate us and hopefully give us a couple of good picks out there for the NCAA tournament. I hear you, brother. Always good. Always a pleasure. You're the man. I will talk to you soon, Eddie. Appreciate it. Eddie Barkowitz, formerly of the Philadelphia Daily News, my compadre for many years. Good tips there, right? And I, I, Eddie's, I love the way he always puts it. He's like, dude, I'm not an extra. I'm not. No, but you're way more educated. And this has nothing to do with Eddie Barkowitz going and betting and winning money. And, and he's trying to explain that. He knows the ins and outs of the betting world. And more so than... Like, he and Dick Girardi, another guy that I used to work with, are, are just, they're fascinating as far as knowing what the ins and outs are. Why is the line made the way it is? Look at this, look at that trending and the stories that he tells us. So we're going to look to have Eddie on every once in a while to ha ha give us some insight on, oh, darn, I wanted to ask him what his best vet memory was. Eddie, if you're still listening, text me what your best vet memory was. Eddie's a South Philly guy. Uh, many, many, many nights spent in afternoons watching Eagles at the vet. So, Eddie, if you hear me, send in your uh, best vet memory. If it's uh, if I'm allowed to say it over the air, I certainly want to do that. Uh, so, you're a Temple alum. You knew the scandal that was kind of going on there. Uh, that the way Eddie explained it, make you feel any better, any worse, all okay, the way you were. Yeah, I mean. There's not a ton that I can add in terms of that. Like, yeah. I think he's got a much better grasp of how all these things happen. So. It, it seems like it was all just a coincidence to me. I don't yeah. think there was any wrongdoing. Yes. That's the way I, I, agree. I I shouldn't have asked you and put you on the spot. I apologize for that. I know you are employed by the university also. So, uh, all right, great time here today on Middays. We're talking about a lot of different things. It is the 20th anniversary of the implosion of the vet. Believe it or not, and John in Yardley wants to share a memory. John, you're on 97.5 The Fanatic. Yeah, hi. How's it going? Good, John. Uh, listen, uh, back in the mid '80s and early '90s, I used to go uh, to every uh, Eagles Redskin game. I'm a Redskin fan, 
uh, my friend was an Eagle fan. His name was Bob Taylor, longtime Eagle fan. And it was one of the games, it was a Sunday, and it was extremely cold. And the people were bundled up like a uh, Michelin uh, tire guy. And uh, your, your bathroom uh, uh, incident reminded me of an incident when we were lining up in the men's room, and it was like maybe 10 urinals and 15 people deep. And all of a sudden, some guys broke off and went, started to go to the bathroom into the service door. Uh, and, and one of the security guys come running in. He's like, no, 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 go to the bathroom in the security door. Stop it. And uh, he couldn't stop them. It was just, uh, it was halftime, and people were just uh, running to the, to the men's room. It was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, those but, were, um, go, ahead. go ahead, John, I'm sorry. But, you know, even as a Redskins fan going to those games, I'll tell you what, I was never more excited to go to the vet with my friend to see those battles. They were unbelievable, and uh, it was good times, actually. Yeah, those were great runs. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it. I don't uh, – a closet or whatever is a door. I don't remember that. It was the first time I saw somebody peeing in a sink at the vet, which wasn't all that great of a memory. Another memory I have, Ray, I was a little, little kid, and we didn't have color TV when I was real little. And uh, I think I was like six or seven years old, and one of my sister's boyfriends – got tickets to a Phillies game, so he drove us over. And walking off of the concourse and seeing the vet field for the first time, you can't imagine how green that AstroTurf looked to a kid who had never seen green AstroTurf on a on a television because we didn't have color TV. Color t- and I'm not that old, right? Color TV I'm not making was, any jokes. Color TV was around. We didn't have any money when I grew up. So I think I was in high school. It was in the 80s. Before we even got our first color television. But that's just the way it was. Tom in Northeast Philly, you're on 97.5, the fanatic. Oh, man, I just hung up on Tom by accident. That's not right. I got bad fingers today, Ray. I got, like, this one finger. Switching a little bit? No, what it is is, I. so I told this on the morning show before. Like, I started to have this back pain or whatever. Went to a doctor. I have, like, stuff going on in my neck. Like, I have... I have um, oh. herniated discs in my neck, That's right? That's not good. So it's affecting the nerves going down to my hands. So my one finger, and this is a, uh, um, a kind of a common thing, I think. Like there was a, a kid in there that was in college that had the same thing going on. I haven't been able to feel like my, what's this, your index finger for a few months yeah. now. So, like, I can use it, but I can't really. Like the other day, I something fell on the stove and I went to peel it off like a piece of egg cracked onto the yeah. stove. So I went to peel it. I didn't realize that it was the hot part of the stove because we have an electric. So I go and I'm wiping it off and one of my other fingers hits it. And I'm like, ah, oh, I have no feeling so much in this finger that I didn't even feel the hotness of the stove. That's not good. So anyway, when I went to get Tom, I fat fingered it. So I'm going to try it again. Tom, you're on 97.5 The Fanatic. What's up, buddy? Hey, how you doing today? Good. How about um, you? I, good. I'm doing great. So I have a couple quick Vet stories. First one, uh, my dad and his buddy used to bring us down. His kids, yeah, sister, and then his buddy and his kids. They we used to just walk around the corridors because Philly sucked. It was the nineties. We 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 look out and there's in the parking lot. There's guys breaking into cars. We start yelling at them. You know they start them and mapping off. So that was number one. So that was always like a funny thing for us. Number two, my uncle used to work. Um, with part of the crew that changed over the Phillies and the Philly and the Eagles because when they both played there and the one time the Eagles lost and this one Ray Rhodes was curse coaching my uncle happened to walk by during like a meeting and Ray Rhodes was just giving them the business screaming at him freaking like he said he's never heard somebody scream so much like that <laughs> and then um I don't. I, I feel like I'm the only person that remembers this. When the Phillies really stunk in the and the and it would be um, empty. Do you ever remember a guy that would just constantly be screaming like just weird, funny little quotes because the mic would pick it up? Was it? It wasn't the hit guy, was it? Everybody hits woohoo. That guy or no? It might have been. I can't remember exactly what he said, but. It, it was just all game because there was never anybody there. Yeah. He was always getting picked up, and it was funny. Like, I just always remembered that as, as a kid. Yeah. And I, I just – I anytime I bring it up, people, like, they're like, I have no idea what you're talking about, blah, blah, blah. 
And then just one other quick question because my memory's hazy. The battery game, was that in the vet or was that at Citizen Bank? Uh, that was the vet. Or, the battery game was J.D. Drew, so that was right. definitely the vet. Yeah, my dad's a Cardinals fan. We were there for that. And okay. we were a couple feet from that guy that threw the battery, and I looked at my dad and I was like, Oh, we should probably get out of here, especially with you wearing that Cardinals hat. So, <laughs> Good move. Good I, move by you, Tom. Thanks a lot, buddy. Appreciate the memories. Eddie Barkowitz did check in. This might be the best vet memory, and I have heard this story before. Being handed a flask of apricot brandy by my late well-meaning mom to try to keep me warm during the Eagles-Dallas Cowboys NFC Championship game in 1981. I was 10. <laughs> Eddie's told me that story before. Absolutely love it. I remember that day like it was yesterday. I was an altar boy at church for 12-15 mass, 1 o'clock game. The priest said a half-hour mass, and I ran home. It's uh, maybe, I don't know, half, three-quarters of a mile. I swear to God, Ray, it was so cold, I thought my feet were going to shatter in my <laughs> shoes. That's how cold it was, 1981. NFC Championship game. Okay, when we get back, I have a little bit more talk that I want to do on this Hassan Reddick situation and the Philadelphia Eagles. Howie Roseman, we're going to check out your texts that you sent to 610-632-0975. So Ray will dive into those a little bit more to see what you have to say. So much more to come up. Bill Calarula joins us at 1 o'clock. Stay here with us. Middays, Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic. Fanatic Sports.
Now, more with Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic, and 97.5thefanatic.com. 11.34 here at The Fanatic. Hope you're either at your couch and the, and the beers are getting cold in the refrigerator, getting ready for the 12-15 game, or you're getting ready to head, head out to your favorite bar. I do have a buddy, uh, at least one, but he and his brothers, he's one of, I think he's one of 12 kids. But um, in his neighborhood, him and his friends and his brothers would all meet at the bar both on Thursday and Friday before the first game, stay all day, lots of betting going on among the, you know them, and uh, go right back at it again the next day. That's Friday's the tougher day. If you go full bore on Thursday, that, that Friday turnaround isn't easy. Talk to me when I'm a little older. Why? It's easy for you, huh? Yeah. I've never gone out really and had beers with you all that much yet. No. no. We were going to go today. We were. You and I were looking to go out today, and, and uh, we had set it all up and everything kind of, and then I came in this morning. I said, wait a second. We have a show meeting, like a big show meeting at 4 o'clock today. Yes. And I think it was in Ray's head to say, well, we could do it from the bar. I didn't say that. You didn't, but I, I think you were thinking it. I wasn't thinking that. Ray, I told you, there's. I don't have very many talents in life. Mm -hmm. If there's one talent I think I do have, it's reading people. You're pretty good at reading me. I'll be honest. It's kind of it's kind of scary coming in here, and it's like, oh, you know, if I'm a little little slow in the morning, or if you know, I'm Slugging. wearing my my uh, you know kind of my emotions on my face. You're you're like, oh, are you okay? It's yeah. kind of it's kind of incredible the ability you have to read people. Huh. But I will say, in this moment, had a lot of experience. I was not going to suggest we take that. No, I did. I honestly didn't think you were. I was kind of trying to make you look like the bad guy. Yeah. So a lot I'm of stuff. A lot of stuff going on here today. Um, but seems like a lot of people want to talk about their favorite vet memory because there's a lot of listeners out there that have a lot of them. Uncle Frank wants to talk about this being his greatest day. Hold on. Frank, you got to wait a second until we get the zapper ready. Okay, it's all ready. Uncle Frank, what's going on today, buddy? Uh, now you're on the zapper train. Don't waste time, Frank. Right to it, bud. Happy first round Thursday, everybody. Attaboy. Yeah. It's the most wonderful time. Yeah, this is my Shangri-La. Um, yes, uh, by the way, mouth editor. Okay, I'll work on that. <laughs> um, so, listen. <laughs> I have asked any... All acronyms related to detrimental to the human mind, I have. So the first round of the tournament, a bunch of us, and we've been getting together for, it's been over 30 years. Uh, our buddy Kevin Purcell's house, we're in his basement, multiple TVs, cool as a beer, you know, stacked to the ceiling. Good. Trays of, you know, pretzels, sandwiches. It's like a damn toga bar party. It looks like, you know, with all the TVs are in the bowels of the, 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 well, because it's just, eat and drink and guys will stay over over until saturday uh he lives close to me so i'll go back you know i'll get a, a buzz take a rest come back back and forth it, it's tremendous can't wait and I, yeah i'll be there by twelve fifteen. all right what's your favorite vet memory real quick uncle frank you have one yeah well yeah 20 of us you should we were in the 700 level uh this poor they were the God, teenagers are wheeling this kid in a wheelchair. We kind of, you know, just felt bad. We're looking, and he gets to the seat. The kid jumps up, and they take the blanket off, open the uh, the seat of the wheel, and there's a keg in there. <laughs> Unbelievable. I love it. Frank, have a great time today. All right, buddy? Yes. Thanks, Appreciate buddy. you. All right. Uncle Frank's getting it done today. It's, it's his Shangri-La. All of the year. That was that was something that as year you know the 2023 year he got really good at. He delivered the points he needed to in and out under two minutes. Good stuff from Way Uncle Frank on that. Well, one. Uncle Frank, he's see there's a there's a new person sitting in the seat, so maybe he's got a new attitude. Maybe Ooh. it'll change. Maybe he'll go back to being the trying to be the three four minute guy. Uh, he tried. He tried the first call. I think you you kind of established the the right there. I yeah. also have not been here uh, long. And I have not been in this chair for middays long, but I have heard that as soon as he started with the wheelchair, I, was, I know exactly where he's going with this story. I thought he was going to say the kid stood up and there was a couple of cases of beer under his, you know, that yeah. he was sitting on. Yeah, but. the keg. I heard that. I heard him drop that one before. It's uh, it's a classic. Yeah, it's that, an all time great. That's not bad. You know, it, it's funny sitting here and talking to everybody about what they're doing today and stuff like that, and you and I going back and forth, and my son calling me this morning. 
and telling me what a great day he's got lined up. I'm kind of getting itchy, right? I got to figure out something. I don't think. What day is this? Thurs Thursday? Yeah, it's Thursday. I don't have anything. I don't have anything after work. I mean, except for again the meeting at four. We have a meeting at four, which yeah, yeah, you're right. I you, you know keep forget you you really want to make me look Zoom. like the bad guy. It's not a Zoom meeting. It's just a call. Oh, it's not a Zoom. I don't think so. I thought it was a Zoom. Ah, well, now you're ruining my life. Alan and Villanova, you're on 97.5 The Fanatic. What's up, Alan? How am I supposed to follow Uncle Frank? That's not fair. Oh, but you anyway, can do it. You can do it. I, I trust you. I told your producer that I would talk about her son, but I really don't feel like it. I don't have anything more to add there. I wish they would. Well, talk. all right, let's just be quick with it. Are you frustrated? Yes. Okay. I'm frustrated. I'm going to get to my vet memory. All right. Uh, I mean, I could go on all day, but I'm going to do it real quick. I had two boys, and we didn't have any, we didn't have se uh, season tickets, so it was a big deal if we were going to go to a game. So we go to a game with no tickets against the Vikings because the Eagles said that they have some. You go to some window, cast only. Go there. There's three. There's three of us. They have two tickets left, only two. I buy the two. And this, this, I was going to figure out what the hell am I going to do? And this young girl comes up to me and she says, I know your problem and I got the solution. I said, okay, what's my problem? She says, you only, you, there's three of you and you only got two tickets. I said, okay, you got that right. What's the solution? So you see that guy there taking tickets? That's my boyfriend. You give him the two tickets and a, and a $20 bill and look my way and he gives a wink, wink, and you're all three of you were in and it worked out just fine. <laughs> That's I, I imagine that went on quite with the ticket takers at the vet. Alan, do you want a game to pick? Because Ray and I are filling out our bracket today, but we need the help of the callers. Do you want me to – can I give you a game and pick a winner for us? Yes. All right, we're going to go Michigan State against Mississippi State. Number nine versus number eight. Who do you like? I'm going to have to go with the Spartans because – in 1999, I took my kids to the Final Four in Florida, where UConn upset uh, UConn upset Duke, and my son wanted a souvenir. And by the time we got there, the only every souvenir for all four teams was sold out. The only thing I could buy him was a little Spartan doll. So I've always had a place in my heart for the Spartans. For all New right, you got them. UConn Duke. That's a funny memory you have there. Thank Alan. Thanks, Alan. Uh, Elton Brand was on that Duke team. I broke my ankle that night playing a pickup basketball or playing in a league, in a basketball league, yeah. I took a foul shot, went to get the rebound because I saw it was going to be short. Guy stuck out his foot. E. Yeah, so I uh, we only had five guys. So I had to play the whole second half. Turns out it was broken in two places. E. Yeah, that wasn't fun. I no. love the reasoning for picking teams. It's an ultimate bracket thing. Uh, why you got Michigan State? Because, you know, not, not Tom Izzo or anything like that. Well, it's, it's, you know. But that's, Izzo is my reason. Right, I it's know. It's the month right, of yeah. Izzo. This is, this is Izzo month. So I'm picking Izzo just for that reason. I had, actually, it's funny that you picked that game because I got a group chat of people that are uh, firing away right now on the back and forth of that game that are, uh, one's Mississippi State side, one's oh, yeah? the Michigan State side, and I'm just watching and enjoying as my friends, you know, argue over the two MSUs. All right, so Eddie sent me a text. My guy at BetMGM says these teams have drawn the most public action. I, I don't think this is bad that I put this out there, do you? I don't think so. No. I mean. Yeah, this is the teams not, that have gotten the most yeah, action. I think this is something that would be put on you know, social media. Michigan State at minus one and a half. Samford plus seven and a half. Duquesne plus nine and a half. McNeese State at plus six and a half. And Creighton at minus one. 12 and a half. That was as of 11.30 this morning. So we're a wonderful day. When we get back, we will dive a little bit more into the Hassan Reddick situation. I don't know what's going on today. Uh, Bill Calarula will join us at 1 p.m. We'll talk a little bit more Eagles with him. Oh, we had some breaking news that my producer failed to come up with. Uh, it's literally right on your board. It's right on your board. I didn't want to hit the sounder oh, because you, you made fun of Matt Menard for hitting the sounder for a, a yeah, lackluster signing. This isn't it, is it? No, no. Okay. But it, it was on your board. Uh, you're, I was wrong. I'm yeah. totally wrong. Okay. You're right. And you know what? I'm going to talk about it when we get back. Not until then. This is Middays. Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic. Can't
Wade and Sal Junis. The big stories that matter in Philadelphia sports. Can you do that in Philadelphia? Can you? and by thefanatic.com.
Welcome back. Middays here at 97.5. The Fanatic. So glad to have you with us on this awesome sports Thursday. All right, Ray. I was asked the question at the beginning of the show by my buddy Joey Merton in a text. Is this the best day of the sports year along with the Masters Sunday and Super Bowl Sunday? I have a feeling none of those three is your favorite. I think you love today. It might be 1A. I have a feeling it might be shared with opening day of baseball. Yeah, so today is probably my favorite of the year just because of what it means. Like, you know, you're seeing the postseason. You're seeing, you know, the crazy chaos. There is nothing that gets me probably more juice than knowing what today means. But baseball season in a week, I I would say it's probably a 1B. There's just so much longer of a journey to, to go down. Today, I've got a million games on a million televisions. I can assure you, though, next week, uh, if I leave here and then go down to wherever I'm going to watch the fills, you're going to see a different animal of me to come like noon, Ooh. like literally seven days a week from this moment. I'm probably going to like turn into a n- new human. Yo, that's what we should do. Let's plan something for after the show on Thursday. Sounds good. And like tell the listeners like, hey, we're going over here. If you guys want to come out and just watch the game. Yeah, I would love that. Oh, I'd love to hang out with people and watch the Phillies game on Thursday. Well, oh, we'll have to put I'll something together. I'll, I'll walk to the back. After this segment, we'll go say, hey, hey we've got an idea. Yeah, let's Papa do it. Have an idea. Yeah. All right, and you talk about hectic and chaotic. Well, nothing is more hectic and chaotic than knockout down at the Wells Fargo Center. And that's going to be next Wednesday, or Wednesday coming up, I should say. Sixers are going to play the Clippers. You get to, you're going to get a chance a little bit later in the show to win a pair of tickets. Then you get to go on the court after the game, play knockout with us. Uh, but, Ray... You have done something as far as this knockout goes, and it's kind of the theme of the day with betting and all of that stuff. You have odds on us, the people who work here at the Fanatic, yes. what the knockout odds are for next Wednesday? Yeah, so obviously it's always a big deal who from the staff is the longest to survive in the knockout tournament, who's the champion. Do you guys really take this ser- Like you talk among yourselves, there's smack talk going on is it really bad i've I've never been a part of it i've been in the morning show you guys aren't usually here during that time so i don't i don't see it go on right i'm I'm shocked you didn't because one of the biggest biggest instigators of this is connor thomas who obviously you know in a at a station that actually employs a former all-star in major league baseball we hear more about the athletic endeavors of connor thomas than we do of ricky Vitalico. good point so I'm shocked that you haven't heard this because Connor's been big on this, and this year one of the big storylines. Connor, the reigning champion, Tom did of not the pre- station. Yeah, of the of the station. Okay, yes. this is all about the station. I don't have odds on okay. on everyone uh, that's Joe showing Smith? up. Yeah, no. I look forward to meeting all of you, seeing all of you, hanging out with you. I don't Absolutely. have odds on your basketball abilities because I barely know the basketball abilities of the people I work with. But this is my way of really setting the stage for knockout. And we've got, obviously, some uh, some fun things to follow with Knockout, but we will have the odds posted on the website coming soon. Uh, but the big storyline this year, Tom Alvord was the champion in 2022 at the station. He did not participate last year. Mm-hmm. Connor wins last year. Tom has already begun start, starting to talk trash on Connor's championship. Really? Yeah, saying that it was fake, not real, because he was not participating. Connor has given this false idea of him taking the high road, even though he's doing that on camera. We all know he's talking smack in the hallways of this place. And I'm excited to see the two of them go back and forth. And I'm more excited for the two of them to be knocked out early and then put that whole narrative to bed and let someone else be the champion. So let me ask you, uh, among you guys that have played before and then do all this smack talk and all that, where do you place yourself in line? Do you guys strategically try to get near each other, far away from each other? How does it usually play out? So last year, I don't know if I was put directly behind Dylan McKinnon in line, but I was not too far off. Um, you eventually got right behind him. Yes, because I knocked him out. Yes, and that was, a, that was pretty great. Um, wow. Well, it was just Dylan had done a lot of talking about how he was the runner-up the year before. Even Dylan was talking smack? Yes, he was the runner-up the year before, the whole thing. Now this year he's got a shooter sleeve, so he's, he's feeling pretty good about himself. So I, I just felt good in that moment and it's all about putting on a show and i did wave him off the floor and i may or may not have sent that video to him that night i may have i've seen it last night well yeah he did tweet it out last night yes i mean good for him on tweeting the video of him being knocked out i would try and get that erased from the internet forever if it was the other way around but yeah so there's there's i think a little strategy with it i'll be interested to see who lines up with who and how this all plays out but uh 
Yeah, we will have odds up for who wins knockout coming up next Wednesday. And participants include, do you know, like, at the station who everybody is playing, or you have a good, yeah, you so, mentioned a couple already, but do you have? Yeah, I can run you down. I believe it's 14 members of the staff. Oh, wow, you really did dive into this. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, this is a... Uh, I could get you the word count on what this is going to be for digital content. Yeah, we put together 1,200 words on this. So, uh, yeah, uh, rumor on the street, Nick Stauskas going to be uh, down there. Whoa, wait a minute. You got, you got... Well, you have to have a favorite. I mean. He, he, yeah, he is part of the staff. Yeah. yeah All right. Listen, All that's, right. That's... So Stauskas is going to be there. Very cool. All right. Andrew Salchunas. Connor Thomas, Tom Alvord, yourself, Bob Cooney, which was big news the other day that you'll be participating, uh, Ricky Batalico, Bill Calarulo, Sylvana Kelleher, Brendan Gunn, myself, Bill McKinnon, Haley, Pat Egan, and Mike Vita. All right. So sounds that's, like a strong staff. Yeah, it sounds like a, a, a very, very strong group of contenders. And uh, I will say that... I feedback from one person that I listed about where they are listed in the odds and they are not happy. Ooh. And I would say it's probably not advantageous for me because they do the scheduling around here. Oh. I uh. have found myself in hot water with... He's a hockey guy. I mean, what does he, what does uh, he know? No, you're saying it, not me, okay? I'm already <laughs> in hot water. Alright, the big news, although it's not big enough to uh, have breaking news, the Eagles have signed a wide receiver. And his name is Paris Campbell, 26 years old, used to be with the New York Giants and Indianapolis Colts. Uh, best season was 2022, 63 receptions for 623 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, I guess a guy that you're looking, he's 6'1", 205. Uh, I'm not going to lie, don't know. I know Campbell's suit better than I know Paris Campbell, so... Uh, another body in here for the wide receiving core. I'm still hoping that they go after, like, one of those little slot wide receivers that just seems to always get open. That's what I'm looking for this year, Ray, in the draft. And okay, I have guys. a name in mind, but I'm going to keep it okay. in my book. I put it down last night. Um, we got and time. You guys will love the college that he went to and all that stuff. So it'll be all fun stuff. So we'll see how that all plays out. Okay, when we get back, when we get to the noon hour, we're going to flick on the TVs. Here at the station, get ready for some college basketball. Hope you're having a lot of fun. You turn the sound down, you watch, you listen to us. It's going to be absolutely awesome. We're going to hit on, as we've been promising, some more Hassan Reddick. We want to take your calls. What's your best vet memory? It seems to be the running theme this year. Also, you can text us at 610-632-0975. You can text and come on the air. You can do both, whatever you want to do. It's the Midday Show. Bob Cooney here at 97.5 The Fanatic.
stories just like that, like mine being in the bathroom and a guy cursing in front of my dad, and I was 10 years old and embarrassed as hell. You stepping over somebody, like, those are the other, you hate to say great, but they are. There are memories of the vet. Well, that, that's Phil. That, it showed the intensity of Phil. And then, you know, obviously in the vet, we used to sneak in uh, at the seventh inning, when, you know, when we were older, and the Phillies were just average. We used to just go in there because they used to open the doors, and we'd just go in there. And, you know, there's a lot of seats available because yeah. the Phillies were never quite that good. I, yeah. I mean, you know, it, it was so many memories. And then, obviously, the Eagles games that they would do with, in the sink, I don't want to even. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I already brought that up. First time I ever saw anybody do that in a sink. All right, Keith, before I let you go here, let me give yeah. you an NCAA game, okay? So you can help us figure it, you can help us fill out our midday bracket. I have 14th seeded Akron against third seeded Creighton. I'm gonna go uh I'm gonna go Akron. Oh! He's going with the big upset. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Eddie Barkowitz was talking about earlier that he loves Akron getting the points. But that's an awful lot of points, but we gotta go with what Keith said. He went with Akron. So that's what we're going to have to go with. Ray, Ray, I brought up before the break uh, quickly about Taiwan Walker. And you let me know that you have maybe a little bit more concern that I laid out there. Yesterday he went, for those that didn't see, uh, five hit, hits, seven earned runs in two and two-thirds. Apparently got, had no velocity going whatsoever, 88 to like 91, 92 on the radar gun. Where do you sit with this? Why it's it's bothering you maybe more than it is me right now? Yeah, it's bothering me a little bit more than it's bothering you. It's uh, bothering you a lot. I can tell by yeah. the way you're yeah, I'm a, I'm a the little sternness in your voice. Yeah, I'm a little uh, you know unsettled. Obviously, you don't want to read too much, and this may be the second time, and this is only what four shows we've done now. So this is only this, this is the second time you've heard me say it, and you're not going to believe me when I say it. When you don't want to read too much into spring training, but when I start reading into spring training, the velocity being down for him. Obviously, we know the first inning struggles that he had uh, a season ago and that he's had, you know, it's not necessarily something new for him. Starting out games, not great. The velocity being down is part of a two, two type of full problem for me because, one, the fastball command's not there right now. And that's concerning for me if he gets himself into situations where he can't work, work himself out of it because he can't command it and he doesn't have the velocity for it. I think his strikeout rate is higher in the first inning, and that's been part of the reason why he somehow finds a way out of jams. Do you think, oh, wow, is he even going to get out of this first inning? And it doesn't look pretty. He gives up runs, but he somehow gets his way out of it. He strikes out batters at a higher rate in the first inning. I think it's the only inning where he's got more strikeouts than actually innings pitched. Otherwise, he drops down uh, throughout the game. And also, when you look at the season-long workload for him, he is notorious for being someone that actually starts quick. For someone that in the first half of seasons, his ERA is a whole run lower than it is in the second half of seasons. If he's not off to that quick start, I don't know if maybe maybe instead this year he reverses that trend. That's the optimistic way of looking at it. I don't love where he's at in terms of the buildup for this season. I don't love where if he can't command the fastball, the fastball isn't as fast as it once was, uh, that's a recipe for disaster for him. you got to learn how to pitch, right? you got to learn how to pitch. If you lose, and everybody loses it, everybody loses a couple miles an hour off that fastball as you get older, as injuries compile, whatever the reasoning may be. He's got to learn how to pitch a little bit better, maybe. If he's lost a little bit off the fastball, well, now it's it's got to learn to keep guys off their to you know on their toes when you're throwing to them. Yeah, I, I think part of that, but I think even more so, just knowing the way he's been able to work himself out of things before, and also just knowing the way you know he's trended his entire career, not having this right now in this season, feels like you know a couple of alarm bells for what his April might be like. And knowing that he typically is able to hang his hat on the first half of the season, uh, if we're already talking about a month where I'm going to be uneasy watching him pitch every time, I, I I don't know. Can he get himself out of the situations he found himself in a year ago? That's going to be a lot to watch, and you're going to get it early on in games because that first day he's a guy that I know we probably in this town the way we view baseball is probably a little older school. Um, not that we want to you know pine for openers. He's a guy that if you had an opener. I'd be curious to see what his ERA was because I think his ERA last season, the first name was like seven. Yeah, um, I think Andrew brought up um, Doc Holliday was the same way. One nothing first inning, and then he settled into a groove. Yeah, you hope it's you hope a one nothing is is there and not a four nothing. Yeah, the difference with Taiwan Walker between but the two of them. I'm glad you brought that up because wise. Vinny from Westchester, he's got a Phillies take on our 
text line, which you can reach at 610-632-0975. What did Vinny have to say, Ray? Wow, he's got two ticks now. He had one earlier. Now he jumped in on the Walker conversation. He says he won't make it to May without being DFA'd. Now that's that's certainly a take. I don't agree with that. One. But he uh, wanted to sh- uh, jump in on the center field conversation. Yeah, and, and when we get back from break, I really want to dive into that one. But go ahead. What does he have to say? He says Pache should be your everyday center fielder. I'm not there. I don't, I'm don't. i not there. It's, it's such a conversation. As those of you who have listened to the morning show when I was on there before, I am not a Christian Pache I don't want to say fan like I don't like the guy or anything like that. I, I He's a 178 hitter. Yeah, he's probably an, an above-average fielder, but no. So where do you lie on that? Uh, it looks like maybe, perhaps, probably, Johan Rojas is your starting center fielder. Extraordinary glove. Unbelievable glove. Real, real struggles at the plate, it appears. Do you let him try to figure it out at the major league level? Or is that the type of guy at his young age that you say, hell no, he'll always have that glove. Let him go figure out hitting in double-A AA or triple-A. Let him figure out hitting there before you have him come up. Which which way do you lean on the Johan Rojas decision-making? Because it's going to have to come soon. Christian Pache is out of options when it comes to sending him to the minors. You can't do it. So either you cut him or he's on the roster. If he's on the roster, how do you have him going? I think it's a really interesting conversation with Johan Rojas. Get in on it. 610-632-0975. 1 o'clock, Bill Calarulo is going to join us, talk Eagles. And when we get back, we'll get into this Johan Rojas situation a little bit. This is Middays 97.5, The Fanatic. Tyrone Johnson, Ricky Patalico, and Jen Scordo. Bet.
Bob Cooney. Taking you through a great, great sports day with the NCAA tournament going on. Phillies baseball starts at 1 o'clock. Flyers tonight at Carolina. Does Sean Couturier break it through the lineup? Is your captain out there for you? But what we were talking about, but before we get into that, Ray, I'm going to give you a game because we got to fill out this first day of brackets. we got to fill out 16 games. So, Raymond Dunn, I need you to give me a winner between number 15, Long Beach State, with maybe one of the um, funniest stories of the whole tournament where they fired their coach. He was awesome yesterday. He was, wasn't he? That was fantastic. He was. And then he goes on to win the tournament. And somebody came out and spoke about him, too. A uh, prominent coach. Was it his Mark own? Few? Yes. Gonzaga? It was, it was yeah. Mark Few. Yeah. So Long Beach State uh, fired their coach before their conference tournament started. They then go to the conference tournament and win it. Of course. Why not? So they go against number two, Arizona today. Who do you like in that one, Ray? I love this story. It is a wonderful story of a coach who's working for free at this point, gets himself into the tournament, gets a ton of publicity, and today he will coach his last game at Long Beach State. I agree with you. I think Arizona is one of the teams to really look out for. I think I gave you like a handful of teams the other day. Arizona, UConn, of course. Arizona, you love Houston. I think either Tennessee or Auburn are going to uh, make a little bit of a run in this tournament. Uh, can't think. I know I had some others on the top of my head that I I had thought of. But but anyway, getting back to this Philly situation, I thought it was a really cool conversation that we had this morning. The Philadelphia Phillies, it appears, are going to start the season with Johan Rojas as their center fielder. Now, we were discussing it this morning off air a little bit. And Kincaid came by our thing, and he goes, guys, you keep talking about him being a 180 hitter. He hit 300 last year in 50 games, or 50 at-bats, I guess it was. It was 50 more games. 50 games, yeah. Uh, okay, 50 games is, okay, yeah, I hope to God he can get back to it. It appears as though after the playoffs started, when people started getting a little bit of a book on him, now this spring training, he's a pretty light hitter. He looks like he might be like a 200 hitter somewhere down the bottom of the earth. The, or, the argument to be made for him, it's a way above average glove in center field. And maybe it saves you some games. I, I don't know, but that's, that's the thought. Have a great glove. Let him learn how to hit. Andrew then, while he was making faces as we were talking to it, said he can't be up here learning for a month or two on a team that has aspirations for a World Series. It's a good point. It's a very, very good point. Uh, what do you, you have a Christian Pache. Do you throw him over in center and just say, go, go learn to Rojas? Or do you perhaps move Marsh from left field over to center field, and therefore you get Merrifield, put him in left field, and figure it out that way? Uh, there's a reason to be made for that. Ray, I haven't really gotten your full what should we do in this situation if it was up to Ray Dunn. Where do you go on it? It's it's very nice of you to say that Andrew has a good point there because he doesn't. He it, does not. He does not, no. Johan Rojas, oh, we're going to learn that he can hit at AAA? That's wonderful. That's great. How many guys have we seen hit at AAA that don't hit in the majors? We're going to learn well, about what Rojas is in the major leagues, and he deserves that opportunity because you know with his glove. I was there. Game four against the Braves. Oh, if you were there then. But I was there. But you know you're saying you can save games with his glove. We all watched it happen against the Braves. That's we, something we did. We did watch it happen against the Braves. In 50 games plus playoff, remember the one that he saved, the other game that he saved? Exactly. Like, okay, you're okay. I'm Put me not, on the spot for 50 other games. I'll find you games where he made great plays in the field because he does that. He and does. when you look at his bat, when you have a lineup that features Kyle Schwarber, Tracer, how much money have you invested in this lineup? It's a billion dollar lineup, basically. True, good I'm point. I'm sorry that one hitter here isn't going to live up to everybody's standards on what they want at bat. We need people in the field that can make athletic plays that can change the game out there. You are a much better team in the field with him in center field. Plus, Look at what you have in right field. I know Castellanos has gotten better, but if I have Rojas... He hasn't committed an error in like two years. Okay. They, he's gotten better. Let, let's not say Castellanos has range, okay? If I'm going into right center field and I got 
Rojas making the play in right center field, I feel a lot better about that. And he, he caught a ball right in front of the fence, and Atlanta turned and threw a dime to home plate. Okay. I, I, I didn't realize you, know you were casting these true, true throw over here. Yeah. But also with Rojas, I saw Rojas, and I go back to that Braves moment. Rojas figured out center field in Philadelphia quicker than Brandon Marsh did. Yeah. And I know, like, we, we he can— He made Brandon Marsh look like a sub-average right. outfielder almost, and he's not. Marsh is going to be an elite-level left fielder. He's going to be a great defensive left fielder. Center field, he's a good glove in center. But if you can give me elite play from center, and you give me elite play in left, I mean, that that's two-thirds of your outfield right there is probably close to a gold glove level caliber of play. All right, so, uh, um, and I, look, I bring up, this is what I do in the sports world. I bring up opposite points to have conversation. It doesn't mean I disagree with you. So don't ever get frustrated. I, I just, I like bringing up the other spot of it. Are you okay that he's on a air quote, two-month audition. Absolutely. Okay. A guy, a guy at his level should be on an audition. And if he's exactly what you say, a premier center fielder, but he's hitting 200, 190, or is that is that audition, that's okay, that's what I expected, stay out there. Yeah. Is that where you are? I mean, if he gives you competitive at-bats, like, again, we, we could throw numbers out here. I think you're going to be able to tell through two months whether or not he can hit at this level. Right. Like, if, if he's, you know, hitting 200, but... He's striking out 45% of the time, and the 200 just happens to be, you know, it's the old uh, Bull Durham quote where you, know, you get one to just work its way through. Right. And your, your average five raises. Five leaders. Yeah, five, five leaders. leaders. And you get, you know, your average raised that way. If we could see that, okay, it doesn't look like he's a guy that's going to profile as eight or in the bigs, and it's that much of a drag on you, all right, fine. Or maybe he shows you somehow, inexplicably so, he's not the fielder we expected. Okay. All right, fine. To me... It's a no-brainer to give the guy the opportunity. We've you've said it before. We gave Pache. Pache's been given opportunity left and right in this league. Yep, Atlanta, you know, we don't then know. Oklahoma. We don't know Rojas. You yeah. can keep Pache around. I'm fine. Pache being on the roster. Hey man, you could sit well, next to Thompson. Have to be. He's either on it or he's off it. There's no in between. Well, yeah, but I yeah. think some people will look at it and say your bench is going to be all right-handed except for Stubbs, which I think will be a little overrated because I think you'll eventually sit Marsh. You'll sit again. I don't want to do a lot of sitting a stop, but with Merrifield, I imagine they'll move him around. You'd be able to have a left-hand bat off the bench when Merrifield plays. Yeah, you probably have to get him 300 at bats this year, maybe even more. Probably. Yeah. 12 o'clock hour. It's brought to you by Service First Heating and Air Conditioning. Get zero percent zero percent financing for 72 months and a $500 rebate when you purchase a complete heating and cooling system from Service First. Learn more at servicefirsthvac.com. When we get back. Bill Calarulo is going to join us, talk about the Philadelphia Eagles. That little gray cloud that's hanging over the head, is it bigger for Bill or is it a little bit smaller? We'll talk all about that here. Middays, Bob Cooney, 97.5, The Fanatic. Fanatic Sports Update. 76ers struggle out west. I'm Ray Dunn. This update is brought to you by Audible. When it comes to audiobooks, Audible has the best selection without exception. Your first one is free when you sign up for a free 30-day trial at Audible. Dot com. The 76ers fell to the Suns 115-102 last night. A disastrous second quarter for the 76ers sunk them in a loss to the Suns as they were outscored by 15 points in the quarter. And the Suns shot 8 for 12 from 3 in that second quarter. Grace now 32 points on 9 threes for the Suns. And Kevin Durant scored 22 points, passing Shaq on the all-time scoring list last night. The loss drops the 76ers to 38-31 and back into a tie. The Heat and back into the play-in tournament. They'll have a chance to bounce back from the loss Friday night at 10.30 against the Los Angeles Lakers, who haven't played since Monday night. The Flyers return to action tonight, fresh off that 4-3 win over the Toronto Maple Leafs earlier this week. Flyers return to the ice in North Carolina against the Carolina Hurricanes. Two sides haven't matched up since November. Last time out, Hurricanes got the better of the Flyers 4-1 in Philadelphia. Flyers earned tonight three points up on the Capitals for the third spot in the Metropolitan Division. We're also a week away from opening day. Phillies Braves at Citizens Bank Park a week from today. And of course, one of the great days of the sports calendar as the NCAA tournament has tipped off. Michigan State and Mississippi State underway already. I'm Ray Dunn. Breaking sports news all day, every day is here. 97.5 The Fanatic and 97.5 TheFanatic.com. Things are heating up in Philadelphia sports. The Eagles have made significant moves in free agency. The Phillies have named Zach Wheeler as their opening day starter. Anticipation is growing for the possible return of Joel Embiid to the 76ers. And the Flyers are fighting for a playoff berth. It's all here. Philadelphia Sports Station for breaking news. 97.5 The Fanatic and 97.5 TheFanatic.com. 
Slater Slater Showman. Patent New Jersey. Private results do not guarantee a similar outcome. Attention former childhood residents of juvenile detention centers of New Jersey. If you were housed at the New Jersey Training School or any other juvenile detention center at any time in the past and were a victim of sexual abuse, now is the time to come forward, as you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. For decades, the New Jersey Juvenile Justice Commission ignored a culture of rampant sexual abuse and failed to protect youth inmates in these facilities. If you were housed at a New Jersey youth facility at any time and were subjected to any sexual misconduct from staff members, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call our New Jersey Juvenile Detention Helpline now at 800-411-1980. The deadline to file a claim may be close. Call now to get the justice, closure, and a possible meaningful financial settlement, even if it happened many years ago. Call our law firm's totally confidential juvenile detention sexual abuse helpline right now at 800-411-1980. 800-411-1980. That's 800-411-1980. Bidding farewell to winter is like a breath of fresh air. And speaking of fresh, our preferred pros are ready to bring a renewed sense of excellence to your doorstep. With spring just around the corner, now is the perfect time to spruce up your home and get a head start on your projects. And who better to help than our trusted group of preferred pros? Purchasing a new cooling and heating system has never been easier. Horizon Services Cooling, Heating, and Plumbing will develop a custom solution installed the next day with no hassle financing. Those drafty windows are costing you more to heat your home. Protect and increase the value of your home with Window Nation windows. 866-90-NATION or windownation.com. Great Railing in Williamstown is now the largest Trex dealer in the United States and has Trex on sale from $1.89 per foot. GreatRailing.com. Check out Preferred Pros today. This paid program is sponsored by businesses highly rated by actual customers. For more details, visit 975thefanatic.com. When you use bounce dryer sheets and your clothes look amazing, it's the sheet. Less static in your life? Yeah, it's the sheet. Smelling fresher than ever? It's the sheet. Oh, so soft fabric? Ooh la la. It's the sheet. Less wrinkles on your clothes? You know it's the sheet. Bounce dryer sheets. More freshness, more softness. Less static, less wrinkles. It's the sheet. There are many reasons to start recovery. If you know someone who is suffering from addiction, we are always here to help. Make the call at 844-REACH-NJ. Quick Draw from the New Jersey Lottery is now Quick Draw Progressive with a free shot at winning a rolling jackpot. That's a free chance to win the growing jackpot every time you play. Take the trip to the pick for all the college hoops action. Watch the games there. Order ahead for curbside pickup. The original Pickalillion. Route 206, Chemung, New Jersey. Join Tyrone Johnson and Ricky Metallico tomorrow from 7 to 9 at Parks Sportsbook and Casino in Ben Salem. Watch all the tournament action on huge screen TVs and enter to win a spot in the Fanatic Knockout Tournament. WPEN, PEN HD1, Burlington, Philadelphia, a Beasley Media Group station. Broadcasting live from the Comcast Business Studios. Powering possibilities. 97.5 The Fanatic and 97.5TheFanatic.com. Coming up at 2, the best show ever with Tyrone Johnson, Ricky Vitalico, and Jen Scordo. Right now, it's Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic and 97.5TheFanatic.com. Ray, if I'm not mistaken... We have a relief pitcher in for Ricky, for relief pitcher Ricky Batalico today. And that would be that Tom Alvord? I believe that's the case. You okay. can pitch in the bigs, you can be an all-star, but jury duty gets you all the same. Yeah, so Ricky's got jury duty today, so you'll be listening to Ty, Tom, and Jen today. Always a great listen. Make sure you check it out, 2 o'clock this afternoon. Also a great listen. And a new member to the family of The Fanatic, Bill Colarulo. Joining us here to talk some Eagles. Bill, how are you today? What's going on, my brother? Congratulations on the new show, man. I'm enjoying it. And I'm enjoying you on weekends also. And I also have a friend that used to coach with that told me to tell you hello. That's correct. We did used to coach together. We had some fun that season. Yeah? You guys any good? We went to the state championship that year. Of course you did. Yeah, we went to the state title and we lost. To St. Joe's Hamilton in the state championship. Uh, that's always a juggernaut up there, those St. Joe's Hamilton people. So, uh, so Bill, get into these Philadelphia Eagles. 
I, I, I can't. I wake up every day, and you have another signing today in Paris Campbell, wide receiver from the Giants. We'll get to him in a minute, and all of the free agent signings. But as these signings dribble in, and some of them come in with a bang, with a, uh, some of the things that they've done in Saquon Barkley and, and Devin White, however he may be, but I still have this cloud hanging over my head with what is going to happen with Hassan Reddick. Where now do you think it stands, if it's changed at all, and where do you think it's going to go? The Reddick thing was something I had on my radar even before they gave him permission to seek a trade because when you looked at his contract, we knew he wasn't happy with it even last season. But the difference this year was his cap hit skyrocketed. It went from about $7 million to close to $22 million. So you knew the Eagles weren't going to be happy with the deal either. But the concern was exactly what's going on now is both sides want a new deal, but if they can't agree on a number, what happens? So I think they're still in a similar position that they were even a couple of weeks ago. I know they pushed off the roster bonus, but I think what's going on is Reddick went out there. He's talking to other teams. His agent is talking to other teams to see if he could get the big money deal he wants. And I just don't think it's happened yet. And then to complicate things even further, not only do they have to come up with the money that Reddick wants, they got to come up with whatever capital the Eagles want in return for a trade. So there's a lot of moving parts. But as of right now, what I'm hearing is Reddick wants a lot of money. No teams have been willing to give it to him just yet. Now, maybe that changes because some teams missed out on a free agent they wanted. But it's an interesting scenario. I really hope they work something out. I like this defense a lot better when you look at that edge and you have all that depth now. If you bring back Reddick, they restructured Sweat. You have Bryce Huff. You brought back Brandon Graham. And now, hopefully, a big step forward in year two for Nolan Smith. I like that a lot better than a team that doesn't have Reddick on. Sure, because see, all those guys that you mentioned, all those fellow edge rushers, they're that much better if they have Hassan Reddick over there also, right? No doubt about it. I mean, we've seen what Reddick can do. You just go back to the Super Bowl season in 2022. He was by far your best defensive player. And in the playoffs, we talk about Brock Purdy and what could have been if you're a 49ers fan. Well, it was Reddick who knocked him out of that game, and he really was a difference maker. And up until about seven games left in the season last year when they started dropping him into coverage a little bit, really everybody on that defense hit a wall including Reddick playing over 800 snaps last year, he was once again your best defensive player. So a defense that has a lot of question marks going into 2024, I don't want Hassan Reddick not on this team because I think he can help everybody, not only your edge rushers. We saw how good the pass defense could be when they're setting a record with 70 sacks in 2022. They come back last year, and with a real lack of depth on the edge, they only have 42 sacks. Well, what happened to their pass defense? They go from first in the league in 2022 to 31st in the league in 2023. So I think this team needs Reddick. So when you say money, Bill, and obviously that's the you know, the genesis of all of this, he got three for 45. He's got 15. You talked about the cap hit. What kind of money is he looking for? Is he looking for that unbelievable $25 million a year payday? Is it somewhere around there? What kind of money do you think it is? That's what I've heard, that it's over $25 million. Now, that could, be his, that could be his demand, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's what he's going to get or what he's willing to take. But from what I'm hearing, it was over $25 million. He wanted to be paid like the top pass rushers in the league. And you look around the NFL, well, Miles Garrett is the only other offensive player who's had 11 or more sacks in the last – four seasons. The other one is Hassan Reddick. So he does have some argument for why he wants to be paid that much, but as good as Reddick is, and I don't want to take anything away from him, I just don't put him on the level of a Miles Garrett or a TJ Watt. Now, if I'm Reddick's agent, what I'm arguing is, well, when Garrett and TJ Watt got those deals, we didn't have a record salary cap. Salary cap went up over 30 million this year. So it's all relative as to what he could be paid. But I think he was looking for over $25 million. I'm hoping that doesn't happen. And maybe the Eagles and him come to an agreement. Even if they had to pay him $20, 21000000 million, I think they should do that in light of what he brings. About a three-year deal, something like that? Is, you, is that the uh, amount of time, you think? 
probably about a three-year deal. I mean, he's, he's getting up there. He's going to be 30. So you don't want to give him too many years. Not many people in the NFL can still play. I mean, you look at Brandon Graham, even though he's continuing to play, he's only giving you about 20, 25% of the snaps. So I don't think you would go more than three years. Now, the question is, you saw what they just did with Josh Sweat. They basically restructured his one-year deal because he also wasn't getting what he thought he was going to get from another team. I think that's a lot of the reason the trade didn't happen with Josh Sweat. So they, in essence, brought him back on a one-year prove-it deal where now he'll have a shot at free agency. The difference, though, is he's only 26, 27 years old. Reddick, he wants his payday now. He doesn't want to hit free agency next offseason being at that 30-year-old mark, which seems to scare off a lot of teams. So you know, I, I hope the Eagles two, three years can get an extension in place. But I think Reddick probably doesn't want to do something like Sweat did and worry about hitting free agency next year. All right, so to wrap up the Hassan Reddick talk, how do you think it does end? What do you think is the solution? And when do you think it happens? Well, they pushed the roster bonus off to April 1st, so I know a lot of people think that that's probably the deadline. But if I'm the Eagles, I'm not really in a rush to do anything. I mean, obviously the draft is coming up. Things can always happen around the draft. We know Howie Roseman loves to make trades. But it actually would benefit the Eagles if they're going to do something, to do it post-June 1st. They get a lot more cap savings if they wait until June 1st. The problem, though, is is a team going to be willing to make a trade that late as their roster starts to get filled? We see it every year, especially Howie Roseman loves to make trades late and even into August. So it's a possibility. But I think if something gets done, most likely it'll probably occur either before April 1st or right around the draft when teams are trying to move up and down the draft board. Okay, so that wraps up the Hassan Reddick talk. We'll see what happens there. Now, over the last couple of days, Bill, you've had a – listen to these household names. A P.J. Mustafer, an Oren Burks, a Tyler Hall, and now today wide receiver Paris Campbell. Uh, how are you looking to shore up that, that special teams unit, or what, what, how do you look at those guys? Well, special teams is one thing, but you also need to add depth. I mean, you have to fill out a roster. you got to bring in a lot of these into training camp, and you never know. And we see this every season with Howie Roseman. He likes to take these low-risk, high-reward, one-year moves. So you bring in guys on these one-year deals, Paris Campbell, Oren Burks, the Mustafer, the former D-tackle from Penn State. All these guys are one-year deals. Tyler Hall is another one. So you bring them in. It's low-risk. It's a camp body, and you never know. Maybe they come in and they impress you. But I always find it funny. These are now the signings where people start to lose their minds about, oh, Paris Campbell, he's going to be a game changer. You know, Tyler Hall, that kid's going to be a stud. We have no idea. You heard the same things last year when they signed Greedy Williams to a one-year deal. Oh, he's going to be a great player. And then he ends up not even making it out of training camp. So low-risk, high-reward moves. Typical Howie Roseman deals. He loves to do this, bringing in guys on these one-year prove-it deals. But a lot of these players, they may not even make it out of training camp. Now, the Paris Campbell one you mentioned, it's interesting because in 2022, he had his best season of his career with the Indianapolis Colts. He played all 17 games, 63 catches, over 600 yards, three touchdowns. Well, the Giants brought him in last year on a one-year deal because they needed weapons. They didn't have much outside of Saquon Barkley, he did absolutely nothing with that team. Now, is that because of his quarterback? He had Tommy Cutlett throwing him the ball for half the season, but he only played 12 games, and he was benched for the final five games of the season, finished with only 20 catches last year. So he really needs this. Paris Campbell, if he wants to get his career on track, he's going to be 27 years old in July. So this is a real prove-it year for him after a bad season in New York. You lose Opeta, you lose Driscoll, backup guys on the offensive line that we all know. Jason Kelsey obviously retires. Just not uh, – where does the draft in your mind go? I think that has a lot to do with it. But where do you think they go three picks in the first 53 that – which avenue are the Eagles driving down, do you think? In, in the first round at 22 – Well, first off, is how we even going to pick at 22? We know he loves to move around the draft board. But I really think it's going to be who falls to them. Obviously, they talk about that a lot, taking the best player available. But you look at their first three picks, 
I'd be shocked if they don't come out of there with an offensive lineman, maybe some defensive line depth on the edge again because they love to build in the trenches. And I know they haven't taken a corner in 22 years, but there's a lot of corners in this draft as well that I could see them maybe taken in the first or second round. But I know it's not the most exciting pick to go offensive lineman, but this is an extremely deep draft when you look at the offensive line position. So that probably would be a smart move. It's not going to get fans really excited, but it would be a smart move. You know Lane Johnson's getting up there in years, and the Eagles have been fairly lucky over the last couple of years having a healthy offensive line. You know, Cam Jurgens missed a few games last season. Lane Johnson's missed a few games. But overall, they've been relatively healthy along that line. You need to have, have depth. And you just mentioned you lost a Jack Driscoll. You lost a Sua Opeta. So they did bring in Matt Hennessy, who wasn't healthy last year. And some people think he's going to be a really good lineman. But I wouldn't be shocked. First three picks maybe even in the first round if they go offensive lineman. And I know it wouldn't be exciting, but I'd be okay with it. All right, so I brought this up a couple weeks ago, Bill, and I want to get your reaction to it. I agree with everything you just said, and and we kind of laid out that, okay, if the best player available is an offensive lineman, you okay getting him? And then the guys were like, yeah. And I said, what if it's a center? What if their ratings has Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon, a center, What if he's the highest guy on their board? Is there a chance? Would Howie, by any chance possible, say, okay, there's Kelsey's replacement, Cam Juergens. We can get you better at right guard, and you're starting to get used to it, and Lane Johnson likes you there. This is what we're going to do. Any chance at all? I think so, and I like Jackson Power Johnson as well because he also adds the same level of versatility that maybe a Cam Juergens added where – Who's to say Powers Johnson can't play right guard? So I know you're saying, well, could they get Cam Jurgens ready to play guard? But there's also the possibility that Powers Johnson can slide into that right guard position. But if I'm Howie Roseman, definitely consulting with Stoutland University. Jeff Stoutland should be involved in this. And I'm asking him, first and foremost, is Tyler Steen ready to take over the right guard position? If Stoutland tells me he is, and that's my offensive line going into next season. But as I look at the draft, I'm leaning on him as well about these different players. And I'm okay if they take a center. We've seen them do it. A lot of people thought Landon Dickerson right. was going to be Kelsey's replacement. Look how good of a left guard he's turned out to be. A lot of people thought Cam Jurgens was going to be Kelsey's replacement. That's what it's looking like this year. But he did have an okay year at guard last year. So I'm okay taking a center because you could always coach him up to maybe play guard as well. So they bring in Devin White uh, to try to shore up that linebacker position. God, it seems like yesterday, but it was like four or five years ago when Devin White was playing football and you could not see him on the field. He was everywhere. Obviously, play has diminished over the years. We heard so many people talk out of Tampa about what he was this past year. What are your expectations for him, Bill? You know, I really don't know. And that's the problem I have with the linebacker position right now when you look at the Eagles is there's a lot of could-be's. You know, the Kobe Dean could be really good. We just haven't seen it. Devin White's another one of those could be really good. Maybe a change of scenery, some really good coaching. We know Vic Fangio, in addition to being a defensive coordinator for a long time, he also coached linebackers for a decade in the NFL. So could a change of scenery and new coaching get Devin White to really live up to that potential because he has all of the attributes you want in a linebacker. He's fast, he's strong, but it just hasn't really translated to the field. But my main concern that that I have with Devin White and not knowing if he's going to be a fit is I think one of the things he did really well in Tampa that got him that all-pro selection was that he could blitz the quarterback. Well, that's because he had a defensive coordinator – in Todd Bowles, who's always in the top three in the NFL in blitzing. Well, what do you know about Vic Fangio? He doesn't blitz his linebackers a lot. So Devin White, the best part of his game in Tampa was blitzing the quarterback. Are we going to see him do that at all in Philadelphia under a Vic Fangio? I just don't know. But again, typical Howie Roseman move. Low risk, high reward. It's only a one-year deal. I know it can be worth up to $7.5 million, but it's really only about a $3.5, $4 million deal. So I don't know what to expect 
from Devin White. And that's why if I'm the Eagles, I'm not done at linebacker. Because yeah. there are still way too many question marks. You don't know what you have in any player. And for once, I want to go into the season saying, okay, we at least know come game one in Brazil, that linebacker is going to be pretty good. And right now, there's no sure thing at that position. In Brazil against those Cleveland Browns, right? Well, that's what the uh, that's what the rumor <laughs> is. The Cleveland Brown player leaked it on the podcast. Yeah, how about that? Thinking. Ah, that's okay. I'm all right with that. That's a good game. Good little test. Yeah, I like that better. My concern was that it was going to be the Green Bay Packers because I didn't want one of our home games, especially against Green Bay, to be at a neutral site in Brazil. So I'm happy the Eagles will get the Packers at Lincoln Financial Field because I think that's going to be a tough game that could ultimately decide the NFC. Yeah. Bill, listen, thank you so much for joining us. You can hear Bill on the weekends here on The Fanatic. Great, great job. So glad that you joined our team, and we'll see you down the road. Looking forward to it, my man. Talk All to right. you soon. Thanks, Bill. Take care, buddy. Bill Calarulo here on the Comcast Business Hotline. A lot of good insight there about your Philadelphia Eagles. Make you feel better, Ray? Ah, you already felt good. I feel great. You, you look great. Oh, so thanks. We, we opened something up yesterday, and that's text messaging on our Hotline 610-632-0975. I'm calling it our texting hotline. How about that? Ray, we have any good texts going on uh, here that, that, that the people are concerned about? Or Well, you just talked a lot about Hassan Reddick, so I'll give you a text about Hassan Reddick. All right. I would let him play out his contract and get an extension midseason based on performance, period. What kind of world do we live in where $15 million a year is not enough, especially since he is a specialist? Can't stop the run, can't drop defectively into coverage. Like you said, if I were Howie, I'd have my feet up on the desk. Remind him if he gets 15 sacks, that's a million a sack and a definite contract extension. Now, who's that from? Because that's a good friend of mine now. Uh, they did not give a name. No? No. Okay. We've been asking for names, but, you know, we appreciate your takes just as much. Oh, we absolutely appreciate your takes. And I disagree with this person. I don't. I, 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 it's probably not going to happen. I understand that and the business aspect and what sports has become now. Sorry, I'm just going to take that side. Yeah, um, you, you can't find another team that wants to pay you, as Bill said, 25. I'm surprised. 25 I'm million? No, I figured it was going to be somewhere at 20 to, to 25. He be paid the, the top money of a, of a defensive end. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm, good for him. I'm not, yeah. So, Howie seems steadfast on not doing that. On the other end, if teams are only offering... Yeah, we're paying him twenty five million, but we're only giving you like a fourth or fifth round pick. And now he's like, No, nah, I don't want that either. I guess just looking at this from Reddick's side of things. In your All world. All right, I'll be Howie, you're Reddick. No, 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 no. In your world. In your world. Okay. Go play out the season. He plays out the season. He has a tremendous season. He's a year older. Is he gonna get the money? This is the time like he wants to get the money now at his age, because if we're talking about, oh no, thirty years old. Here yeah. it comes. Yeah, I, I love how 30 years old now. 30's not 30 anymore, but go ahead. But if, if that's the case, he plays another year, has plays at a high level again. One, there's also, you know, the idea of a potential injury in a contract year and what no question. detrimental that would be to him. So that would be the one side of it. But the other side, even if he plays well, he's played another season, he's another year older. If he's not getting this money at this age, why is he why should he believe that if he plays well next season that he would get that money? At that age. Right. So, and Howie looking at it the side of, I, 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 yeah, let me see you. Uh, let me see how the others play with you. And then we'll decide at a, at a later date. Like, maybe we'll revisit it. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know how this is going to play out. I agree with you that it's probably going to be all settled one way or the other. You said, did you put a specific date on it? No, but I, I imagine this will be done by the draft. Okay. All right, so by the draft. So that's that's the, you know, the only thing that's a little, like, the losing six out of your last seven is the big, dark, rainy, lightning cloud that is over your head. But that kind of clears simply because it's gone away. You've picked up new people. Things change. New season coming. But, yeah, that's my number one story right now is that little black cloud that just doesn't seem to be leaving my head. Don't know why. NCAA tournament going on. We hope you're having a great, great Thursday. Lots more to talk about when we get back here on the Midday Shows. Bob Cooney, 97.5, The Fanatic. Fanatic.
Sports Update. 76ers struggle against the Suns. I'm Ray Dunn. This update is brought to you by Allstate. Some people just know there's better ways.
Good games going on here, Raymond. Michigan State getting a little bit of a lead. Duquesne throwing up a lead on BYU. Oh, I just love today. It is just the greatest day. And I'm in such a good mood, Ray. Such a good mood right now that if you're the fifth caller to 215-263-0975, we are going to give you two, not one, two tickets. Two to the Sixers Clippers next Wednesday night. You get to see that game. James Harden is back. You watch it, and then after the game, you get to go on the floor with us to participate in a knockout tournament. 97.5, the Fanatic Knockout Tournament. If you check out our website later on today, Ray. Today? Tomorrow? Today's the plan. They today they can see the odds. Yes. How far down am I? Uh, probably further than you would want yourself to be, but higher up than... Uh, one other person. <laughs> no, no, no. You're you're pretty far up there. I have a feeling that the write up might be more what stirs the bad blood. Oh, there's a write up. Yeah, there's a write up on everyone. Who who did the write ups? Uh, you can say Ghost Writer. What? No, certainly wasn't me. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. If you say remember, so. we had four fun days. Remember that. It was you. You son of a bitch. You. Did you read it? <laughs> Uh, no, I have, oh. how could I have read it? I don't know. The way you're reacting, you feel like you, I feel like you're already upset with me. I can read you, Ray. We talked about this earlier. I, know, I can read you. It's very scary. And very you scary. wrote it. And oh, now, it. now there could be something going on between us. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to be, like, no one is going to be a fan. It's, I wrote in the intro of that, uh, you know, post on the website. That's I'm not making any friends by doing this. I try to... Let everyone know this is not this is not at all a personal thing. This is strictly a business, and I'm in the business of giving out fanatic odds. You're in the business of being an ass. Yeah, that's okay. why I got into this business. <laughs> it allows me to do so. All right, I'm going to go with uh, North Carolina number one seed against Wagner. I'm not even going to ask the uh, callers Way to that. Go out on a limb there. Yeah, I, I I already wrote down North Carolina, so we still have a few more games that we have to get through. Before we get out of here, but Bill's been holding on for a while, so I want to get to him. Bill, you're on 97.5 The Fanatic. How are you, buddy? Thanks for holding on. That's no problem, man. So, you know, your question was earlier was, is, uh, you know, top memories of the vet, you know? And I got to go with, you know, the body bag being one of them. Oh, yeah. But And then the summer of 94, I don't know if you remember that, but we had, uh, what, we had Pink Floyd, the Rolling Stones, Billy Joel, and Elton John, all within a month. Is that right? Yeah. How about yeah, that? that yeah, I mean, to me, that's it. But then on the assignment with the Eagles signing Campbell, you know, I would love for them. I wish they would sign, like, Tyler Boyd or even uh, Hunter Renfro. I, I'm probably going to say his last name wrong. Hunter Renfro, Renfro is a name that I brought up last week, Bill. I would love to see. Now, he's fallen I, off. His production has fallen off. But he's the kind of slot receiver I would love to see here. Him, man, that I like. It's kind of like I don't know. It reminds me of like old school, you know, a little bit. Yeah, but, yeah. And he uh, can get open in the slot. All right, Bill. I'm going to give you a game. You ready? Yeah. Go ahead. 14th seeded Moorhead State against third seeded Illinois. Uh, Illinois. You got to go Illinois there, Bill. Thanks for holding on. We really appreciate the call. Have a good day. Another vet memory for you. I have seen a concert at the vet. I have seen a concert at the old JFK Stadium. I have seen a concert at the Spectrum, at the Wells Fargo Center, at Citizens Bank Park, and at Lincoln Financial Field. Wow. That's impressive. Like that, right? It was funny. One day we were sitting around talking about the old stadiums or whatever, and, and I was, yeah, I was at a football game at, at JFK. My dad took me to an Army-Navy when I was a kid, and I was like, yeah, I was also at a concert there when Amnesty International came through with a lot of artists. It was Springsteen and and Sting, and, and uh, Peter Gabriel, Yusu Endor, Tracy Chapman. Um, I saw that, and then I started thinking, wow, where have I seen concerts? Sure enough, all those places, all six of the venues that used to be down there and are down there now, I've been there. Pretty good. How do you like that, Ray? Yeah, listen, I like that a lot. Okay, as long as you're into it. Yeah, I'm a fan I'm into of it. it. All right, I'm going to give you the next game because I can't take this one because I have a rooting interest. So if something comes up, if your cousin's brother's, you know, nephew's uncle is playing for one of these teams, you have to exclude yourself from it. Right. So yeah. I am taking myself out of this next game, so I will give it to you. Number 11, Oregon, 
versus number oh. six, South Carolina, the Gamecocks. Dude, you're not going to make me the enemy of your son now, are I, you? you? You pick, Ray, this is, I'm all about honesty and all that stuff. You pick who you pick. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take Oregon in this one. You selfish bastard you are. I'm not even marking that down. <laughs> all right, you got Oregon in that one. We got Nevada and Dayton. Uh, a 10th uh, seed versus a 7th seed. Ray, I'm going to take this one. I like the Flyers. Going to go with Dayton on that one after you just upset me by taking Oregon. So that takes us down to the Colorado State-Texas game. Another 10-7 matchup. Sorry, I have to be precluded from this one. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. Personal vendetta against Texas. Like Texas football. Uh, but Texas basketball, since they ousted Shaka Smart, Shaka's my guy. Oh, so. okay. All right. Therefore, I'm taking Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be a jerk to you for going against South Carolina. I will give you the next game, which has a local fla uh, flavor to it. Number 14 seed Oakland against number three, Kentucky. Kentucky is putting up 150 points today. They like to score. Yes. Yeah, and, and the one, uh, uh, what the hell's the kid's name? Um. Oh, my shepherd. Yep. Uh, so much fun to watch. Of course, you have DJ Wagner down yep. there and another kid coming off the bench that's from uh, Camden High also. So some local angles there. They go off at 7 o'clock tonight. Uh, another game here that uh, we got an, a line on that many people are betting this game. McNeese getting 6.5 from number 5, Gonzaga. Where are you? It's not Gonzaga. It is Gonzaga. They are the Zags. Well, so no we matter how Gonzaga. you pronounce it, they're going to win it. Okay. You like Gonzaga in that one. All right, let's go to a 15 seed versus a two seed. A lot of people are picking this as now it's hard to say a two seed is your is your dark horse, however, however you want to label it. But a lot of people like Iowa State to go really far in this tournament. And I had a text from a buddy today, I think during this show. It was either text or on the uh, YouTube thing that said, uh, Iowa State was a team that they're picking to go all the way. So South Dakota State, Iowa State. Ray, I'll give this one to you. Iowa State wins, but uh, I think the overvaluing of what you just saw in the conference tournament is what's driving the Iowa State engine right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So you're, they're not as strong as people think is what you're saying. I think a lot of people are valuing, hey, wow, look at what they did. You know, look got at, a two seed. Yeah, they did get a two seed. They're a good seven and seven. They're a very good team, Bob. I'm not saying they're a bad. I'm not arguing with you. I'm just it does sound like you're trying to argue. Like, oh, it's a little bit. Just a little, <laughs> just a little bit. All right, St. Peter's takes on a team that I think might make a pretty good run in this thing, and that's Tennessee. I think we'll both agree. I'm going to take Tennessee. I'm going to go out on a limb on this one, Ray. You don't see the upset by St. Peter's, do you? Hey, man, last time I picked against St. Peter's. No, I'm taking Tennessee. <laughs> All right, uh, 11 seed versus a 6 seed. We got NC State against Texas Tech. I want, I'll let you go with this one. I want so badly for NC State to win this game. They have to win this game. Oh, we're picking them. Okay. Yeah, let's Because our let's, favorite player in the whole country is playing. Let's let's pick with our heart on this one. Let's I can't go remember State. what his name is right DJ now. DJ Burns. DJ Burns. Yeah. Yes, he's yes, our favorite DJ player. DJ Burns, 6'9", listed at 275. I think he's a cheeseburger short of about 350. But, wow, what a talent this guy has. I mean, if you, when you watch him, he has finesse. He's got great footwork. Obviously, there's power there with him. Sorry, so we're rooting for NC State. You didn't like my comment of the cheeseburger. I did. I liked it a lot. Oh, I laughed. okay. All right, uh, another game we have here, Samford, a 13 seed against Kansas. I think Kansas is in, like, their 26th straight tournament, something crazy like but that. But they're without their best player. Bill Self, they are without their best player. Uh, Samford only getting seven and a half in this game. Yeah, Samford's been a real sexy pick for a lot of people. Uh, and I will be the first to admit I'm also caught up in the Samford you know, wave here. So I'll go with Samford. No. Yeah. I can't overrule you. That's your pick. He's got a 13-4 upset. Last game of the day that we're going to take. A game that we'll be sitting up watching and saying, my God, I've watched so much basketball today. It's like throwing that last meatball down after you've had 100 of them, you know? But it is number 10 seed Drake against number 7 seed Washington State. Um, yeah, this is your pick. You're up. It is my pick. I think I'm going with the upset here. 
I think I'm going to go Drake. Go on Drake? I'm going to go Drake. Big one for Drake. Big, big, big win for Drake. So there's our picks for the first round. Tomorrow we'll do the other 16 games that will be played, and we'll ask you to help us in with that. Um, we have our 610-632-0975 text messaging board up. So when we get back, we'll take a few more looks at that, see what you have to say about that, and get you ready for Tyrone Tom Alvord. And Jen, today, Tyrone came storming in last break and said, Tom is a full-out idiot. He thinks blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. It's going to make for an interesting show for certain. This is Middays. Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic.
Welcome back. Middays, Bob Cooney. Glad to have you here. Hope you're having a great, great sports Thursday. Hard not to. I just got a text from a buddy of mine, Ray, who copied a spitting chicklets tweet that says, now look, I'm just repeating what this says, and I put it out there. I am not reporting this. That, oh boy, that uh, Sh- Sean Couturier looks like to be a healthy scratch again tonight. I haven't, I'm looking all over, and I'm sorry for the delay. We're trying to look all over to find it, uh, definitely. But that's what is being thrown out there, that it looks like he might be. Wow, this is this is bigger than just, one game's one thing. Teach a lesson, whatever. You go out and you win the game. If it is, in fact, if this is true, two games of him being a healthy scratch, as Ray does his best Tom Cruise risky business impression with the sunglasses on in the studio. That's how bright your future is. You need to wear shades. Uh, this is, uh, this is, this is really something. I'm not playing here like, oh my God, the Flyers. No, I, I'm, I'm looking at it like a coach has decided to do this to someone he just annoyed in captain. It's pretty big news, and. You te- or, or, I'll put it out there this way. Are you teetering on losing your players in that you're making an example of your captain in a playoff run when they probably know him being out there has to be better for the team than maybe a couple other guys that you're putting out there? Or, I don't know, is this something? is there something deeper to this? I'm not getting into specifics at all. I'm not, you know... I'm not even using really names, but the fact that a coach is benching a healthy captain for the second straight game, is there more into this than, than, than you think meets the surface, Ray, or is it just as simple as he's not playing good and I don't like the way he's playing? I don't know if it's just that simple. I mean, he's not playing good, and that's that goes into it. But also, I think being deemed a leader on a Tortorella team, uh, you kind of raise the bar in the way he is going to go after you. And I think... He is one that has made examples of players asked to try and drive the point home to the rest of the team. And I think right now, Kateri not playing well after being named a captain. I think he's trying to drive home his point with this. Uh, is it fair? Is it right? I'm not really answering either one of those questions. I'm just saying he hasn't played good hockey, and I think this is the way Tortorella deals with these types of things where it's okay. He's not playing well. Let me show the rest of this team the way this is. Like, I think Couturier saying he doesn't like the way he's been treated around there recently is probably... I think that played into it a little bit? I think No, I think it's part of what Tortorella does. Like, he goes after the veteran, goes after the leader. You know, he's harder on you than anyone else. And I don't know if Couturier maybe hasn't taken well to it or just in general, the hockey hasn't been good from him. So Tortorella's going to continue to fire away at that. It's wild. Like, does he think he's going to change as a player? Does he has he changed his attitude? Some the guy's been in the league and on the Flyers for twelve years. He's thirty one years old. I just with though that evidence presented to me, I'd find it hard to believe that any player is air quotes changing the way they play after twelve years, after seven hundred and eighty five games. Now, is it a case where you, you appear or appears to you as a coach effort isn't there? Well, did the makeup of this guy not lend to you to watch him for your tenure here as coach? And something had to say, yep, that's him. Uh, I said it before, just my personal thing. I When they named Couturier, I was like, oh, man, I would have rather seen Konechny. Why? I don't know. I just think he's more kind of Philadelphia-like. The chirping, the hitting, the goal scoring, all of that. I just thought Konechny was was made to be the captain here. But I'm not I'm not doubting what John Tortorella did. But is he? This is this is. We I, I'm not overplaying it because all oh, sports talk radio. I, it really intrigues me, and I told you Tortorella intrigues me. This steps out of the boundary of intrigue. This steps to the boundary of, is this man nuts? <laughs> well, given past history, I would say, yeah, I think a little bit. I think he is a little nuts. 
I think that's how he has made his living, being a little bit crazy when it comes to the way he coaches and the way he goes about carrying his business. Because the caveat here, this is John Tortorella. This is what he does. That's understandable. But you have to look at this season. They are in a playoff hunt, way unexpectedly. Nobody thought that the Flyers would be here at this point. Is he taking that away? Because I'm sorry, no matter how Sean Couturier is playing right now, and I haven't seen him crawling on the ice for 12 minutes a game, no matter how he's playing, he has to be better than one of the four centers that you're putting out there ahead of him right now when you're scratching him. Proof is in the pudding. They won the game against the Maple Leafs. Yeah, I guess. I mean, you know, until it doesn't work, until you got like winning cures everything for everyone else. Okay. That's what I like about you. You're like me in that sense where you, you, you just have to look at it two ways. Yeah. Everything needs to be looked at two ways. Uh, Whether you agree with it or not, so be it. Things that were looked two ways quickly before we get out of here from the text line. I just want to make sure that uh, we all know that Jay and West Philly uh, checked in with the uh, uh, All Star sure Maxi six points. Yes. First thing, I, one of the first things I thought of this morning. When I woke up before I got my good thought into my head. So, Jay, good on you. You're right. He hasn't scored in double figures in two of the 60 games he's played this year. Are bad. Listen, thank you for joining us here. Middays, we'll be back tomorrow. Same time, 10 to 2. Bob Cooney, stay tuned for the best show ever where you have Tyrone, Tom Alvord, and the wonderful Jen Scordo. We'll talk to you tomorrow, 10 a.m., everybody.